million vehicle scans verified by ASE certified master technicians. And if you need help, we can recommend a shop for you. Ask for O'Reilly Veriscan today. Oh, 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 O'Reilly. Auto Parts. Want to get hooked up with free stuff and get into some of the biggest sports events and concerts? Sure you do. Keep it locked on 101 ESPN for your chance to text in and win on the Air Comfort Service Heating and Cooling Text Line. WXOS, WXOS HD1 East St. Louis. 101 ESPN is driven by Auto Centers Nissan, home of the lifetime warranty and 30-day return. Live from the Car Shield Studio, this is the opening drive on 101 ESPN. Good Friday, everybody, and welcome to the opening drive on 101 ESPN in St. Louis. We're at 7 o'clock. Time check brought to you by Clarkson Jewelers, an officially licensed Rolex jeweler with Brooke Grimsley and Danny Mac. I'm Randy Carricker. Matthew Rocchio is in Vegas for Easter weekend. Perfect place to, to bounce back, <laughs> I guess. Uh, and uh, Bradford Bruns is in for Matthew. How are we doing, kids? We're doing pretty good. Good. I got a, a cryptic text this morning from Jay Delsing. And what did Jay uh, he, he said, meet me at the studio. Uh oh. I thought, oh man, something's going on here. And uh, I did. I just met him five minutes ago outside the studio and he had cookies. Oh. And he said, all, he's I, man. all I keep hearing about is Randy's carrot cake. You've never had my cookies, so bring it up to those fools and let them <laughs> taste what real sugary treats are oh, all about he is the man so there's oh, cookies you, back there from jay wow i didn't even notice that you brought those in dan it's okay like show down at the okay corral meet me at the studio very stealth yes it really was and so we could give him a review of that oh yeah you guys yeah. got to dive in before jay's segment at uh 7 30. yeah so uh, here's what we got coming up on this fabulous edition of the opening drive on 101 espn Every edition is fabulous, but uh, we're going to talk to uh, Jay Delsing coming up at the bottom of this hour. At 8 o'clock, Darius Shepard of the St. Louis Battlehawks, who get their season underway tomorrow in Michigan against the Panthers, the vaunted Panthers, uh, formerly coached by Jeff Fisher, by the way. So it used to be like a 500 team. Uh, I don't know now. They, they might have changed. The, well, no, they weren't. If they played 10, they would, would they be 4 and 6? May, June. January, February, March, April. April 6th would be a Jeff Fisher day in the in the UFL. <laughs> oh, no. He has many days across the yes, he country, does. doesn't yes, he? he does. For, for us here in St. Louis, it was kind of 7 and 9, even though he did go 8 and 8 a couple times. 8 and 8 was big with the Titans. Yeah. We're also going to talk to Joey Vitale on this show. Robert Thomas is going to join us. A lot coming your way on a good Friday on 101 ESPN. Last night over at Enterprise Center, the Blues come away with a victory over the Calgary Flames. The final score is 5 to 3. Hashtag LGB. There you go. Two points for the oh, Blues. There, it's, uh, I don't know. How, how are you guys feeling? I'm, I'm feeling pretty good. I'm pre feeling pretty confident. You're a little sarcastic. But that's shocking. I, I find that absolutely <laughs> I shocking. I want to know how you guys are feeling. I feel better than when they uh, lose. So seventh win in the past nine games. Drew Bannister said they had a lack of energy. And in watching that game, it did seem like it took a little bit to get going. But they are truly at a spot that they can't lose. Third period was entertaining, man. That was, was back and forth. And that hot. was fun to watch. Yeah, That down, was a lot of fun. Yeah, Down 2-1 after a period. Nabors and Buchnevich score in the second. Saad and Buchnevich score in the third. And the Blues come away with a victory. Unfortunately for them, though, Vegas doesn't comply with our wishes. Well, they faced the Winnipeg Jets, and they lost in that one. But at this point, I do like that you still found a way. You mentioned what Bannister's comments. He said that the flu bug has going around. He's not making excuses, but there was definitely a lack of energy, and he felt like they didn't look as sharp mentally and physically out there. But the biggest thing is that they still found a way to win, and that's what they should be doing at this point. They shouldn't be paying attention to the scoreboard, what's going on with the other teams. They should just be focusing on winning. Jordan Bennington, by the way, we've talked about him so much this season. Two assists for him last night. 
He's it outrageous. You, yeah, well, two he, assists. He can handle the puck. I mean, yeah. that's one of the things. That's one of the the benefits of having him between the pipes is not only is he going to save you games, but he is going to then start a rush on the other way. And that's what he did on the first goal of the, the game last night. And he had two assists, as you mentioned, Brooke. And he's a hell of a player, man. He's fun to watch. Awesome. By the way, we should note that we aren't chasing the Golden Knights anymore. We're chasing the Kings. We're yes. five points behind L.A. with the win over Winnipeg. Vegas passes L.A. in the standing. So the Kings have 85 points. The Blues have 82. 82 points with nine games to go. So now they're just five points back? Uh-huh. There we go. How about that? Isn't that fun? You're saying there's a chance? Yeah. The Kings have 87 points and the Blues have 82. Yeah, so five I, I, back. Yeah, I feel better than I did yesterday at this time. <laughs> I feel better chasing them than I would I do too. the Golden Knights. Yeah. So the the Blues will be back in action tomorrow night. They'll take on the San Jose Sharks. Should be a W. And we'll have the pregame for you at 6, the action at 7 here on 101 ESPN. Yesterday in L.A., the Cardinals lost to the... L.A. Dodgers in their 2024 season opener. The final score was 7-1. to one. It was 5 nothing after three. The three MVPs at the top of the Dodgers lineup doing the damage against Miles Michaelis. And uh, Miles did not give the Cardinals the innings that you'd hope that, that he would give them. Hopefully he'll have games where he does give you six innings and three runs, earned runs or less allowed. Here's the Cardinal skipper, skipper Ali Marmal, on the Michaelis outing. Miles did a nice job. He was on the attack. He got clipped a couple times, um, but 18 at 20 first pitch strikes. Um, did what he normally does. He attacked the zone. Um, that's got him 0-0. And then uh, Freeman got him 0-0, and uh, they took good swings off of him. But um, he executed what he was trying to do as far as the getting ahead. Unfortunately, it didn't work out. Okay, I get that uh, you are playing the Dodgers, and they do have the three MVPs. But I don't see how you can go have a pitcher go four and a third and allow five runs on seven hits, walk a couple, and say that was a nice job. That was not a nice job. That's not what you need from your starting pitcher. And if that's the attitude that they have, they have no blanking chance. Are you surprised by the result, though, I guess? Is I'm not surprised thing. by the result, but you can't say you did a nice job. Just say, hey, uh, here's what happened. As Kerry always used to say about Mike Tomlin, just give me the news. Just give me the news. I don't need that opinion. Don't I don't need. I don't up. need the nice job stuff. That's crap. How about Betts, Otani, Freeman? Five for eight, four walks, a double, two home runs, two strikeouts. You you said this the other day, Randy, and I was like, man, that doesn't make any sense. And now I started doing some research on it. This might be the best one, two, three in the history of baseball. Yeah, they're yes. incredible. It's unbelievable. And when they roll over the lineup, it's like, man, what are you going to do? I mean, Dave mm -hmm. Roberts should not lose 50 games this year. No, no. They're, and they're going to get better. That's the scary thing is that with Bueller coming back and Kershaw coming back and Blake Trinan coming back and several other injured pitchers, they are going to get better as they go along. You said that and I thought. You're out of your mind. Yeah. What are you talking? No, this no, may be the best one, two, three in the yeah. history of the game. Yeah, I. You, you look at the the three hitters in a row. It's better than our MV3. As awesome as our MV3 yes. was in 2004, these three are better than our MV3. Now going back to Miles, I went back and looked at some of the highlights and the pitches that he gave up hits on or the home runs. They were up and over the middle of the plate. Mm -hmm. So I, I don't care if you're pitching to contact. You can't pitch to that portion of the plate you're going to get hammered at this level and to say you did a nice job I don't necessarily agree with that and maybe it's just you know Ollie sometimes or any manager say well he did fine he did a good job he did fine and then they start into their assessment of a player but you know four and a third on opening day where you give up those kind of runs and those kind of hits isn't a nice job no that's and it, even if you think that because he was going against three Hall of Fame players who have yes. won the MVP even if you think that the optics are bad that's the kind of thing where a really good PR staff will go in and say, and the reason that I know this is because when the Tennessee Titans lost Super Bowl 34 to the Rams, those guys were devastated. And Tony Wiley, one of the best PR people I've ever known, he was with the Rams. He, he actually tried to save the whole Redskins thing and couldn't do that. But he was with the, the Texans. He was with the Titans. And he goes in and he says to George McNair, and I think uh, Dyson, he, he said, look, and these guys are crying. He said, I know you guys don't want to say anything, but you got to go out there and here's what you need to say. And that's one of the things that in spring training, the really good public relations people and staffs do is they they prepare everybody in their organization for what to say. And that just is not 
it's not wrong because of what ha- who it happened against, but it's really bad optics. And I, I think you're, you're trying to back your guy, too. You're always going to do yeah. that unless your guy is showing you up and then you, you let it rip. But you're always trying to back your guy. Right. And I do get that. But don't you think that the Cardinals were kind of somewhat prepping us for what we were going to experience this season, especially at the beginning of the season? Didn't you guys feel like that with some of the comments that were coming out just at the beginning there that they knew that oh, this with- was going to be a very tough tr- a stretch to start the season? Yeah, and, and with the injuries. And that's this is making a mountain out of, mole, uh, out of a molehill. It's really not a big deal. It's just it's just bad optics on the second day of the season after you lose seven to one. Yeah, it's opening day, and <laughs> yeah. so you sit there and you go, yeah. man, this team's gonna be terrible. They can't yeah. hit. Which, by the way, they did not hit. Goldie Outs- did though. Uh, outside of Goldschmidt, <laughs> no one got a hit. Yeah. Literally, no one got a hit. Victor Scott had a stolen base, uh, reached on an air, but uh, outside of that, there wasn't a lot of good things. Now we did see Riley O'Brien. And I did watch him and say, now I realize why he's in the minor leagues as long as he has been. He couldn't control the strike zone. Mm-hmm. And then when he throws some of these pitches that he had, I heard a lot about his sliders, breaking ball. I thought, this is why he should be yeah. in the major mm-hmm. leagues. So if he can ever bottle that up and be consistent, they have something in him. And I thought Palante looked better. Now, he gave up a run, but I did like his stuff. I thought it looked better. Oh, we got to see the death ball, Dan. We talked oh, a lot yeah. about the death ball with Palante. And you brought up Riley O'Brien. I think it was a lot of nerves that you saw there. But still, your first major league baseball strikeout is Shohei Otani. That's pretty, good. That's yeah. pretty nice pretty to fun. have on your resume. Pretty fun. Now... Here is Ali Marmol on the Cardinal offense. Teams just like spring and, and panic. Um, this is a guy that's been good for a very long time. Um, his swing, he's in a good spot with it. Um, the last couple of days of spring, he felt a lot better about where he was at mechanically. So um, good day for him today. Cardinals had three hits. Let's see. Donovan 0 for 4. Gorman 0 for 4. Arnato 0 for 4. Contreras 0 for 3. Burleson 0 for 3. Walker 0 for 3. Scott 0 for 3. Win over. Oh, Paul, Paul Goldschmidt went 3 for 4, though. He had uh, three of the Cardinals' three hits. With a solo home run. So, yes, yeah. he was the only one. <laughs> the rest of the Cardinals' lineup was hitless in 27 at-bats. So I don't really know what you take away from that because we talked a lot about the starting pitching needing to hold up for this season. But then when you see that, and I get that it is the Dodgers. Tyler Glass now was nasty yesterday. Yeah. I don't know what you do about him. No, he's luckily, a problem. Yeah. Luckily, that was... Uh, last time you have to face him as of the series but still he is absolutely nasty up there he was the difference in watching the game Mm -hmm. i mean their starter was really good and the cardinal starter wasn't Mm -hmm. i mean that's the difference in the game and they were taking uncomfortable at bats against him uncomfortable swings by really good major league players that the cardinals have in the middle of their lineup and they're fooled on some of these pitches you get to see it was uncomfortable and guys were real comfortable against michaelis and you know you can say what you want he he got he got knocked around and that's just the way it went tonight an apple tv game and zach thompson will go against bobby miller of the dodgers that's a 9 10 and that is on apple tv so keep that in mind. Also yesterday, Mike Trout with an early home run off of Corbin Burns, but then Burns struck out 11 in an 11-1 win over the Angels for the Orioles. Rangers over the Cubs 4-3. Justin Steele leaving that game with a hamstring strain, and we know how those can be for starting pitchers. And the, the Reds over the Nationals by a score of 5-2 to two to get their season started. In the NCAA tournament, ILL. I and I. I and I. There we go. The Illini with a 72-69 win over Iowa State to advance. Alabama, UConn, and Clemson also win. Illinois shoots 51% from the free throw line and still wins the game. If they have any chance to get past UConn, who they face next, mm-hmm. I mean, they can't do that. You can't shoot 51%. But their ability to move the ball early in that game, Iowa State traps at just about every single stop that you have. Uh, you get the ball in the corner, they're trapping. Get the ball in the wing, they're going to try to do that. Get it across half court, they're trapping. And their ability with ball movement to find the open man, they open up a nine-point lead. To me, that, that first five to ten minutes of the game was the difference because they were able to jump out to that lead. Illinois was just strong from start to finish there. They started out strong and they were able to close it out strong in the end. And of course, Terrence Shannon Jr., he just took over like he's done all year. Mm -hmm. Now, who they face next, that's going to be a lot tougher considering it's UConn. It's the best team, right? UConn, if you beat UConn, you've beaten the best team. And to be the best, you have to beat the best. And if Illinois does that, they beat UConn. They, win they can it. beat anybody. Yeah. I, I think they win it. If they I get agree. past UConn, they win the whole thing. Which is the way I started my bracket. You did. I had them out against Moorhead State. Shows yeah. you what I know. <laughs> <laughs> Dan, Brooke, Randy, Bradford is here. Coming up next, 
Yesterday wasn't completely depressing for Cardinal fans. At least it shouldn't have been. There was something really fun that happened. That's next on 101 ESPN. College hoops are on ESPN. Tonight, it's the Sweet 16. Coverage starts at 6. Your home for the NCAA is 101 ESPN. Drive on 101 ESPN. Brought to you by Sumner One. A lot of people had the hill to die on at the end of spring training that they wanted Victor Scott to the second on the Cardinals and injuries forced to the Cardinals to place him on their opening day roster. And lo and behold, he does what he does, and that is stole a base, and it wasn't even close. If Victor Scott, based on what I saw with that one stolen base, but man, if that's him and he's getting on base, he'll be an unstoppable force. He will be, and he's doing exactly what you want. I'm glad that they are allowing him to do that. I thought this stat didn't seem real at first, but then you were able to hear it during the game, and they brought it up afterwards as well. Did you guys see this? That Victor Scott the second, when he stole his first career base, um, became the first Cardinals player to steal a base in his Major League debut on opening day, regardless of age, since 19 19- Hundred. Amazing. Really? I thought somebody did it. I mean, yeah. somebody could have walked into a stolen base, you know what I mean, over these years. Right. Gary Templeton. <laughs> I, absolutely. I, I, I think he, he didn't come up, though, on opening day. That's the thing. It's got to be opening day yeah, with a rookie. Col- Coleman didn't come up on opening right. day. McGee didn't come up on opening day. Uh, on that team, Terry Pendleton came up in the middle of the season. Tommy Hurd came up in the middle of the season. It, it, you have to have the perfect, and obviously, it's because it hasn't happened in 123 years. Now, it didn't happen in 123 years. It's got to be the perfect storm, and it, it is for Victor. So I mentioned this yesterday, and you guys, I don't think we're paying attention because I really don't pay attention to you guys. But, uh, I said the Cardinals were 27th in infield hits yeah. last year in Major League Baseball. So it's not something that you really pay all that much attention to. I get it because you're talking about power and gap to gap and home runs and all that stuff, and that's the way the game is played today. But if he can give you these kind of hits, and it wasn't a hit, it was ruled an error, I thought mm-hmm. they could have given me, I, I could have gone either way with I it. I agree. Mm-hmm. Um, because of his speed but if he does those little things and then gets on and disrupts what they want to do it can make a major difference with this team one other point to be made and i'm sitting there watching the game and they're down five nothing or five one whatever it was and he gets on first base and i thought 
I've been saying this a lot. You know, they wait until they hit home runs to try to come back. I, I think you got to throw that out the window when he's on the base. On I the agree. bases, he, he's got the green light at any point in time because he may jumpstart you the way that other plays in baseball do. And that's what he's able to do. He provides that spark. I just thought it was very fitting that what he's able to do in his major league debut before getting his first hit is that he steals a base. It just felt fitting for him. And all due respect to the analytics people that are driving down to Bush Stadium right now. Love you. But don't worry about his launch angle, okay? Like you said, Dan, he hits the ball on the ground. If he hits the ball and it's not a line drive and it's not a, or, or a fly ball, he's got a chance yes. to be on base. And then he's got a chance to give you a double because he'll steal second. Don't worry about this kid's launch angle, okay? It doesn't apply to Victor Scott. It shouldn't apply to Mason Wynn, even though he can hit for a little bit of power. But allow these guys to use their athleticism. Try to do what what Theo Epstein recommended you do with these rules changes and utilize your athleticism. I can't wait till this guy gets like two hits and a walk in a game just to see mm -hmm. then what the end line looks like. It's going to be two hits, a walk, three stolen bases, two runs scored, mm -hmm. diving catch in center, something like that. And that's something we just don't see in, in Major League Baseball, much less with the Cardinals, but I mean with Major League Baseball across the board. Dan, I remember being at Vince Coleman's debut, and he didn't have a hit, but he had, but he had a couple of stolen bases against the Expos in 1985. And I got the same feeling yesterday. His Victor Scott the second speed, like Vince Coleman's, is breathtaking. Yep. And if if he's on base, like I said, I don't care how teams are set up. I don't care about pop times. I don't care about release times. Victor Scott is going to be able to steal the base on you. How many t people do you think now are going to go get a Victor Scott the second jersey? <laughs> I was I, I had lunch with our friend Scott Adamac yesterday. He's going out to get one. Now his name really? is his name is Scott. Okay. So he's going to have the Scott 11, but he's getting one. Yeah, absolutely. He's going to be a popular player. He should be. He should be. And uh, the other thing I liked is just watch him play defense. How calm and collected he is. Just on even just routine plays, base hit to center, mm -hmm. fly ball to left to right, he's there. He just he's very, very calm in the outfield. So that is the least of your yeah. worries of what he's going to do defensively. It's just a matter what can he do at the plate. And speaking of the defense, the Cardinals played a reasonably clean game. They didn't have any errors and but at some point I think the defense has a chance to be spectacular. Like, not five gold glove spectacular, but I think that they have a chance to make spectacular plays. Yesterday, though, was for this group of players, I think, about as well as they can play defensively. Yeah, Arenado came in on that ball, barehanded it, it and you, yep. you watch that, and I'm watching with a couple of buddies, and they're like, man, that guy is amazing. I said, yeah, he's he's going to make that play probably nine times out of ten. You, you're going to have a gold glover at first base, potential at third. Uh, you're looking at center field. Who knows? If Victor Scott plays every single day, what he could do defensively, the metrics will show that as well. Um, I think Walker's going to be okay and right. I'd love Donovan if he's playing second base. But generally speaking, this should be, I think to the greater point, guys, is that this should be cleaner baseball than what we saw a year ago because mm -hmm. you're not going to see as many guys jumping out of position and you're going to have more of an everyday lineup that isn't hurt. Isn't that kind of nice of a bright side here that despite all the injuries that you have in the outfield that you can say that at least this seems like a good group defensively? I'd say so. Yeah. I think it's going to be anchored by the guy in center, and he's the youngest of the bunch. That's where it all starts. And I'm convinced that Jordan Walker is going to ascend defensively. And there's a reason that we call him Donnie Baseball, because he can play all over the diamond. So I, I think that Donnie Baseball will be fine as an outfielder. And I guess you're going to get Newt back. Newt might be back right after the home opener. So mm -hmm. that'll help, too. I think if you get Newt Parr. Then you look at Scott in center, Newpar in left, Walker in right, Donovan at second. That's a pretty, and then the other complementary players that you have around him, that's a pretty good defensive team, should be. Yeah, and I'll be interested to see how they deploy Gorman at second base because they say they don't want to pigeonhole Gorman as a DH, and that's fine. But how do you deploy him? Is it uh, w when you have Mats on the mound? Is it against the left-hander where the, the other team's loading up with right-handed pull hitters? I, I wonder how they use Gorman. I, that was part of what I was going to say, is that that would be part of the way I do it. I think the other thing that you could do, too, is that kind of like if Burleson is in left and Gorman's at second, I'm looking at if I have a lead after, let's say, six or seven innings, I might take him out. I hate mm -hmm. taking out that at, that at bat. I don't like doing that. But if it's a really tight game, I might have to do that. Yeah. I want to go. Do you have something to add here? Because I yeah. want to talk about the Dodgers for a second. But if you have anything to add, Brooke, go ahead. No, I was just going to ask you guys what your big takeaway was from yesterday. Mine was going to be, and you guys told me this, and I should have 
listen a little bit more, throw the spring training stats out the window because that's exactly what you saw with Miles Michaelis. He had a great spring, and I do understand that this is the Dodgers with three MVPs. I mean, that is absolutely difficult for anybody to touch and to get through. But at the same time, I'm trying not to be discouraged, guys, so maybe talk me off the ledge here a little bit because I am concerned after seeing that start from Miles Michaelis. I, I'm not overly concerned. I, I think anytime you look at the first starts of opening days or just the first starts of seasons for pitchers, it's just it's hectic. They're they're going a little bit uh, like 90 miles an hour, you know, and it should be down to about 55. You know what I mean? It's just mm -hmm. like guys just get ahead of themselves. Not all, but some do. So I'm not overly concerned. I think he'll be fine. I just think the Dodgers are really, really good. And if you leave it over the middle of the plate and up, you're just going to get destroyed. And that's at times what happened yesterday. I look at the body of work last year in which Miles Michaelis led Major League Baseball with 35 starts. And he was 9-13 and 13 with a 4.78. He gave up a league-high 226 hits and a league-high 107 runs. I think what we saw yesterday is who he is, except he gives you more innings generally. And the, yes. Dodgers, the Dodgers are going to force you to throw a ton of pitches. But yep. I think what we saw yesterday is kind of who he is. It was 2023-esque for Miles Michaelis. Yeah. And that, that is where my concern lies a little bit. Because yeah. with this starting rotation we talked about, it needs to hold up. And it feels like you have a lot of guys who might be threes or fours or even fives in typical rotations. And this is why we talked about a lot during the offseason that you needed just one more frontline starter for this group, especially considering now that you don't have such Gray. Right. You nailed it. That's exactly right. And sure. we talked about it as soon as Mo got mad at me for saying that if you're going to spend this much money to be a 500 team, it's a waste of money. Now, here's the thing. They needed to get a number one and maybe they'll get a number one, but they don't have a number one because to me, every it's I'll just say it one more time. The number one pitcher is the most important aspect to having a world championship team. If you get a number one, like a Garrett Cole, mm -hmm. look at the difference he makes for the Yankees. Yeah. I mean, if he's on the mound, you have a chance every fifth day. Stop a losing skid. Game one started in the playoffs. That's a difference maker. Yeah, it is. Um, going back to Brooks' point about don't trust what you see in spring training. Don't trust what you see with Paul Goldschmidt in spring <laughs> training. Exactly. <laughs> he looked like a different hitter yesterday. Yeah, he, did, he did. Okay, the other point I want to make here, and this is on the Dodgers' end of things, and we only have about a minute, minute and a half. We talk about Shohei Otani being the best player in baseball because he can pitch and be, because he can hit. Mookie, Mookie Betts, Betts has never played shortstop. Mookie Betts. <laughs> he's unbelievable. unbelievable. <laughs> Unreal. Yeah. He has become my favorite player to Me watch. Me too. I, I, just think, I think he can play second base. He can play center field. He plays right field. He's got a big arm. He can steal bases. He takes walks, and he hits for power. What else yeah. do you want? And he's a great guy. Great guy. And, and he, yeah, he's got that, that southern courtesy. He kind of reminds me of Brooke. And uh, just with his demeanor and how nice he is. He's from the Middle Tennessee area. Yeah, also fantastic bowler. So mm -hmm. I he grew up in the same area. He's a few, he's just maybe one or two years older than me, but he was always known as one of just these freak athletes, super talented. He could play basketball, he could play football, he could play baseball, obviously, mm -hmm. and also a fantastic bowler. Yeah, he's he's just 300. gifted. He's yeah. 300 bowler. Yeah. yeah. He's had perfect so, games like yeah. right and left, so, or whatever uh, they call them. Uh, uh, isn't it a perfect game? Yeah. Yeah. 300. Yeah. Perfect. 300. Sounds yeah. right to me, Dan. Yeah. <laughs> if, if you want to come to me and say Shohei Otani isn't the best overall player in baseball, Mookie Betts is, I don't know how I argue it strongly. Yeah. You know, that's, Otani is awesome, but I don't know how I argue against you and say, well, okay, he can play right field, he can play center field, he can play left field, he can play second base. He can play. He can really play shortstop, and he's going to be, right now, today, he's the best offensive shortstop in baseball. Might be. You can make case for it for yeah. sure. Maybe yeah. top three, top two yeah. in the game. Pretty incredible. Yeah. That's Dan. That's Brooke. I'm Randy. Coming up, we're going to talk to Jay Delsing, and uh, we're going to give him the 1 to 10 rating on his on the cookies that he sent <laughs> to the studio next on 101 ESPN. Coverage of 101 ESPN is presented by Under Law Injury Lawyers. Get Jim.com. The Cardinals' home opener is this Thursday, and 101 ESPN will be broadcasting live from the Budweiser Brew House inside Ballpark Village. Opening day is finally here, and we'll be set up just steps away from Bush Stadium with the opening drive, BK and Ferrario, and the fast lane live from Ballpark Village. Our live broadcast is refreshed by Budweiser. This Bud's for you, and by Holiday World and Splash and Safari. Beast on fun this summer with the new Good Gravy Roller Coaster.
Hey everyone, it's Brooke here, and this year we decided it was time to make a major upgrade to our home by updating our bathroom. We have this house in U City, it's over 100 years old, but we don't exactly love our main bathroom. So we decided it was time to make a big change, and we weren't really sure where to start, so we decided to reach out to one of our great sponsors here of 101 ESPN, and that is ENB Granite. ENB Granite's team visited our house for a free consultation, and they came up with a vision of how to really transform our bathroom. My favorite part of working with ENB Granite was stopping by their their amazing showroom to explore their large selection of in stock custom countertops and cabinet options. Of course, my favorite part was picking out the colors for the new bathroom. Jen was the one who was working with us and she has just been amazing. She had so many great ideas for us that fit within our budget. And that's what they do there at EMB Granite. They have been turning visions into realities for over 20 years. Go So go and schedule your free consultation by calling 314-645-9300, excuse me, or go online to EMB granite.com or stop by their showroom today and make sure you mention that I sent you. Opening drive, the balloon party, BK and Ferrario, to the fast lane and more. If you missed anything on 101 ESPN today, get caught up with all the shows and 101 podcasts at 101ESPN.com or on your 101 mobile app. Driven by Dobbs Tire and Auto Centers. Live from the Car Shield Studio, this is the opening drive on 101 ESPN. Brooke Grimsley, Dan McLaughlin, Randy Carricker, the opening drive on 101 ESPN. And Dan brought with him this morning cookies that were prepared for us by one Jay Delsing, who's with us on the Celebrity Line. You can hear Jay and Dan Sunday mornings, 8 to 10 here on 101 ESPN. And Jay, first of all, what's the genesis of you delivering cookies to the opening drive? Well, when your golf game goes to hell, you got to try to do something else. Uh-huh. Well, these are spectacular, and I know that much is made of the Traeger carrot cake. Jay, these are absolutely wonderful. These are delicious. Great job. Uh, oh, thanks. I was thinking of you, Randy. I, they're not as, as sugary as they can be because I cut back. There's only half the sugar in there, but mm -hmm. 
uh, that, that, I, that makes me not feel quite as guilty when I eat 30 or 40 of them when I make them. <laughs> Jay, these are spectacular. I think I'm going to give them a 9 because it's a different sort of cookie. I'm showing our YouTube cameras right now. So, of course, we have the chocolate chips, but I believe that that is some sort of nut that is in there as well. Tell us the process of making your perfect cookie. No, uh, no recipe. I just kind of throw a bunch of stuff together. I've been doing this for a long time with, with four daughters. We did a lot of a lot of cooking and a lot of just making stuff up. So uh, it's um, it's basically just a bunch of, uh, well, a lot of butter, which, you know, what can go wrong when you put a lot of butter in anything? It, it's going gonna, it's gonna to have a chance. And, and um, there's two different kinds of chocolate chips. I'm a dark chocolate fan, so I put a lot of dark chocolate chips in there. There's some milk uh, because it gives it a little more sweet. And then there's uh, macadamia nuts. And then there's also oatmeal that um, kind of mm. gives it a little, gives, makes it a little thicker and, and, and sticks with you a little bit. Hey, Jay, I have a golf question. Uh, and, and you actually have tried to help me with this, and I forgot it. But when I get near the green with my wedges, and, and I remembered it uh, last time I played in Arizona a couple weeks ago. But can you talk about having your hands ahead of the, the, the club head when you get near the green? So you're... you're your wedge should actually be angled a little bit, right? Correct? Very, very little. So if you think about this, this is where the Golf Channel has screwed up so many people with their golf games, where they tell people hands forward and firm. And if you watch guys that play for a living, that play on Sundays, the only time they do that, Randy, is when they're trying to hit a hard, low chip or pitch mm -hmm. you basically want to have your hands in a more neutral position which is just barely on the front edge of the ball not three or four inches forward because it takes loft off that the off the wedge and the when you guys when you get closer to the hole we want the ball softer when we're farther away from the hole we want to hit that thing man as hard as we can but when you get closer to the hole we want softness and more precision and that's with your um, your hands not not quite so far forward. So what's the key to getting the ball up in the air so that it just drops on the green? Yeah, and, and to not trying to help it up and the ball and the, and and getting the ball in the right position in your stance, Randy. So for a right-handed golfer, most of the time, if you want it to come high and soft off your face, the ball's got to be slightly forward in your stance, but leave your hands on the. the on the ball and not way forward okay. because way forward takes a bunch of loft off and the less loft the lower the thing's going to come in and then keep your knees and your hips and everything level everybody tries to scoop it and as you dive and move your and, and change your levels the club you either you're either skull it or you hit it fat and that's what i see all the time Jay, let's talk about the opening round of the Houston Open. Scotty Scheffler had his 28th consecutive round under par to start the year. What do you think about his really strong start to the season right now? Brooke, we're watching. You know, he doesn't have any of that Tiger pizzazz and flash, but, man, he's got a lot of game. His hitting, I, I say this every time anyone asks me, it's just it's almost startling how, how well he's hitting the ball. He's approaching Tiger-type numbers Back in the 2000s, when Tiger had, you know, his run and won eight and nine sort of tournaments. If Scotty keeps putting like he is, it, it's it's going to be a bunch of dominant golf. And it's really our game does really well when it dominates. Scotty being such a kind of behind the scenes guy, it's it's not really what we what we're used to seeing. Philly Mick and Tiger in the last 25 years, our two best players, they're. They're drama people, man. They're drama people. Scotty is no drama. He's just like, yeah, thanks his wife, cries a little bit, and collects a big fat check. And, you know, with Phil and Tiger, it's, it's you know, this happens, that happens, and there's a lot to, to read about off the course. Scotty's just not that guy. We saw that Tiger officially said he'll be part of the uh, Masters coming up in a, a few weeks here, Jay. Uh, in terms of what he could actually do, he, he doesn't play, and he, he said he's going to play once a month. What do you think reasonably, reasonably we can expect from Tiger Woods in a couple weeks? Making the cut, I think, Danny. I, we, we talk about this probably way too much but because we just love the guy and want him to, to play more. But, I, I mean, when you don't play competitive golf like that, and you can go out and play with JT and you can gamble a little bit, but it's just not the same. And what we've seen with Tiger is a, a struggle with a putter 
which no one has really ever seen in his entire career. And that's just for not playing. I mean, you need you need those reps to get used to your heart racing and your adrenaline. You know, when your adrenaline is pumping, you guys, the, the last thing you want to do is make a soft, smooth stroke. You want to try to smash something. And that comes with a lot of practice. And even the great Tiger Woods, needs he needs those reps. And I'm really bummed that he didn't play more. I, I really thought when he said he's going to play once a month, I kind of took it more literal. And when he didn't play in L.A., just he didn't finish in L.A. because of the illness and the flu, I really thought he would have add, added maybe an Arnold, Arnold Palmer to Bay Hill championship or something like that. Both of those, that golf course or even the Players' Championship in Jacksonville, super, super easy courses to walk. Flat, Florida courses, but for whatever reason, you know, so I, you just don't really know with him. He keeps so much under wraps and it's so private. You just really don't know what's going on. But I just want to see him make the cut. I want to see how he's going to walk. I want to see how his game progresses from day one to day four and, and, and just get him out there. And our, our ratings need a boost. Mm-hmm. That, that being said, Jay, I was thinking about this the other day. It's five years since he won the 2019 Masters. We we don't really put it in perspective because it doesn't seem that long ago. <laughs> but really, that's the last time he won, he's won anything. No, and I, and, I, and you're right, Randy. And that was so uh, unexpected. At least, I mean, I was there, and lo- the crowds were amazing. And, and the electricity, because you could just kind of feel this buildup for the back nine at Augusta. And it's a, it's crazy to think that's been five years ago. But, you know, this car crash nearly kills him. And, 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 and uh, from what I understand, a lot of other human beings would have had their leg amputated and he was like, there's no way you're going to do that. So, I mean, anything we get to see from him at this point is really a bonus, but I, I hate thinking that way. Uh, Jay, what do you got going on for the Easter edition of golf with Jay Delsing? We got Kelly chase, the great Kelly chase and his, his uh, puck cancer event that's coming up. I think it's April 5th. And um, so we, Chase has just been such a good friend and just, uh, uh, he's instant offense. You know, you just kind of start the machine rolling and let him go. So we, we've got a lot of Kelly Chase this, uh, this weekend. All right, looking forward to that. Have a great weekend. Happy Easter, Jay, and thanks for the cookies. Right on, guys. Have a great day. Appreciate it. Take care. That's the great Jay Delsing with us on 101 ESPN. Didn't uh, you didn't realize he's a uh, baker, did you? I did not, and yeah. I'm impressed, very impressed. <laughs> thank I you, like Jay. his style. Yes, thank you so much, Jay. I like his style of just throwing things together. That's you, how you know yeah. you're a talented baker when you can do that and still accomplish a good yeah. cookie. What do we think with half the sugar, though? Why not twice the sugar? Maybe three times. <laughs> no. <laughs> Need a little no. boost in the morning? Why not? Exactly. That's why I can't eat those crumble cookies anymore because I had oh, like half best. of one and I texted you. Remember that one mm-hmm. day, Randy? I was like, was I'm zooming. not feeling good. I was, like, <laughs> I was like, this is an extreme sugar rush. I don't think humans are meant to consume this much sugar. I don't think so. I am. <laughs> uh, I'm fine with it. <laughs> Coming up, we've got Take It or Leave It. Get your text into the Air Comfort Service. Text line 314-399-9646. 314-399-YOHO. Tioli next on 101 ESPN. It's the Blues game. Want to hear the highlights? Need player reaction? Want more analysis and opinion? It's all here on Curbside Reaction, your next day post game podcast with the voice of the St. Louis Blues, Chris Kerber. Catch new episodes of Curbside every morning after every Blues game on 101ESPN.com or on the 101 mobile app. Spring is right around the corner, and it's the perfect time to consider refreshing the outside look of your home. More than just gutter experts, gutter pros and exteriors can help you get the curb appeal of your dreams. If your vision includes soffit, fascia, or siding, call today for a free estimate. Free gutter cleanout is included with every leaf protection purchase. Visit gutterpros.com to learn more and fill out an estimate request form. Gutter Pros and Exteriors provides a no-high-pressure sales approach to help you find the right solution. Gutter Pros and Exteriors. Water goes where we tell it.
At L.L. Floyd, we've been a trusted partner to pros for over 30 years. With over 400 nationwide warehouses full of in-stock, job-ready inventory, you'll get what you need. And our exclusive pro pricing means that pros never pay retail. Because at L.L. Floyd, all we do is floors. So we're going to do it right. Sign up for a free pro account today to start getting pro benefits. LL Flooring. Every step covered. One oh one ESPN Sports Center. Goldschmidt goes yard, but cards go down. Good morning. I'm Bradford Bruns with your Sports Center update, driven by Johnny Lawnoff Chevrolet and Johnny Lawnoff Autoplex. First baseman Paul Goldschmidt had a banner season opener in Los Angeles. However, the rest of the Redbirds bat silent. The Dodgers prevail 7-1 to one as Miles Michaelis couldn't complete five innings. Goldschmidt did belt a homer and two other hits. St. Louis hopes for additional offensive support tonight when Zach Thompson duels Bobby Miller at 9-10. Pucks the note take down to Calgary 5 to 3 Jake Neighbors and company currently sitting 5 points behind the Kings for the final wild card spot out west tomorrow brings another critical matchup on 101 ESPN against last place San Jose and from the hardwood the fighting line I beat Iowa State by 3 sealing their elite 8 berth Alabama nips number 1 seed UNC while Clemson charges past Arizona 77 72 the sports center update was driven by Johnny Londoff find new roads and shop 24/7 at londoff.com and londoffautoplex.com are you kidding me? This is the opening drive on 101 ESPN. Brought to you by Sumner One. It's time for Take It or Leave It. I want to say something. I'm going to put it out there. If you like it, you can take it. If you don't, send it right back. Get your text in test 314-399-9646. And give us your Take It or Leave It. Brought to you by Gloria Lou Realty. Visit GloriaHasTheBuyers.com and start packing. That's my final offer. Take it or leave it. Get your text in now. 314-399-9646. 314-399-YOHO. For take it or leave it. Take Yo ho. There, there we go. We there go. you go. All right. We talked earlier about the tragic news that 49 year old Larsa Pippen and 33 year old Marcus Again? Jordan have broken up. <laughs> Come but on, man. We get this from Larsa. She said, quote, I think we, she and Marcus, are on a different journey, and I feel like I have to be true to who I am, what I'm doing, and what he's doing. I want him to be happy. He's a great guy, but I just don't feel like it's for me. Take it or leave it. Marcus is just too old for her. Oh, too old for her. Hmm. I might have to take it here. You think yeah. she's going to go younger, like we discussed with Chris and Cavallari, where she's gone? She could, because she really was young. dating Malik Beasley, who's like 24. 
Oh, wow. Yeah, so it could happen. Maybe that's what the issue is. I think, I Not think a, he's a big too enough old. age gap for her. Yeah. 33, and she's 49. He's too old. Dan, you don't like how he keeps us updated with Larsa Pippen and Marcus Jordan? I'm going to be completely honest, and I mean this wholeheartedly and sincerely. You find I, it adorbs? I don't. <laughs> I can't it's... keep up where one is with the other. So Randy brings well, up these names, and I just... I blank. So this is Michael Jordan's son and Scotty Pippen's ex-wife. I got that one. I got okay. those two. Okay, well, that's where that's where I am. Okay, but and, and by the way, she goes to somebody, and then he goes to somebody, then they come back, and then they break up during the Super Bowl, and there's Instagram oh. stuff, and I, I just I can't keep up. Your friends talk to my friends, talk to their friends, talk to me. That's like, that's the way it's working. You understand right what I'm yeah. trying to say here? It's all the drama. I love the drama. Lots of drama there. Former Cardinal Tyler O'Neill etching his name on. If you guys saw this or not, oh, yeah. into some more baseball history last night, becoming the first player in Major League Baseball history to homer in five straight opening day games. Take it or leave it, he will play more than 80 games this season. Oh, oh easy take. take that. This is Scott Boris' client. He's in the final year of his contract. He's going to play it out. He's going to put up big numbers, and he might be the comeback player of the year in the American League. And as Mo said, when they traded him, he'll probably get MVP votes. Yeah, he might. He'll play 130 games, and he'll he'll hit 30 home runs and drive in 100 runs. And steal 25. Yep. And maybe have an OPS over 900. Yep. When is the last time he did that? Was that 2021? 2021, he, he was good. top eight or top seven in the MVP. Maybe top five. I think he was top five. Yeah, he, he is going to play... Believe me, he'll play unless he breaks his leg. He'll find a way on the field. It's his contract year, and he will get paid. He put on a show. Yeah, even if he breaks his leg, he He, might. He was eighth, Dan. You you were right off the bat. He was in 2021 when he had the OPS of 912, uh, 34 homers, 80 RBIs, eighth. And he won the uh, gold glove, by the way, that year, too. Take it or leave it when the Dodgers, not if, when the the Dodgers make the playoffs. The hottest seat in baseball will be that of Dave Roberts. I'm going to take that. I will take that. He's got to win. I mean, they've invested so much, obviously, into the payroll of this team. Expectations are not the division, not to get to the NLCS, but they've got to win. And his track record has been he's done a hell of a job. I mean, they continue to win, but then the narrative will say and and be split on, well, he was just given a bunch of talent as opposed to he kept the talent together to get them to a position to win. Not only that, but who were the two guys that put this Tampa Bay train on the tracks? Andrew Friedman and Joe Madden. Mm -hmm. Good point. Andrew Friedman is now the baseball operations chief for the Dodgers, and Joe Madden is working for MLB Network. And you could say that it's plug and play maybe for Dave Roberts, but there is something to keeping it all together. I I do think so. And and dealing with egos and making sure that everybody is copacetic. Absolutely. All right, Bradford, what do you got on the text line? Good morning, guys. The messages are streaming in. Take it or leave it. If VS2 steals a base on opening day in the Lou, it will be the loudest ovation of the day. Take it. I'm going to take that. I'm going to leave that. I think the loudest ovation will go to Matt Carpenter that day when he's introduced in the uh, the motor parade, the motorcade, whatever it is. When they, the players are introduced, I think Matt Carpenter is going to get a huge ovation. Oh, uh, that's that's a good point. Take it or leave it. When John Mozeliak gets introduced, he should send out Lars Newtbar. Nude. So that it's confusing Nude. a little bit. Yeah. <laughs> they get introduced at the together. same time yeah. for no reason. Because right. <laughs> Mo says, yeah. hey, can I just hop into your truck and we just go together? Cardinals president of baseball operations, John Mozeliak, and outfielder Lars Newtbar. Nude or boo, but we won't know. <laughs> exactly. Create confusion. I am partial to this one. Take it or leave it. Otani had to think twice about taking that gamble on the base paths, but just couldn't resist. Oh. I'll take that, yeah. Well, Come on, leave guys. That. Leave it. Yeah, let's make sure that we get through the investigation. Then we can pile on. Okay. Yeah. Fair <laughs> enough. <laughs> Tioli Goldie starting off hot yesterday was more encouraging than the fact that the Cardinals lost. So I'm going to leave that. Away. I'm going to leave mm-hmm. that. I'm going to take that because if they're going to go anywhere this year, your corners have to be really good. They've got to be back to the form that they were, were a couple years ago. So if I get that out of Goldschmidt Arenado and realize it may be a growing pains along the way with Wynn and with Victor Scott and maybe some other young players that if you get those two corners going, you're going to have a chance to win. And the reason I left it is because he could have gone over three yesterday and I still would have been convinced that he would have been fine. He yeah, only had an 8, 8 10 OPS last year. I think he'll, he'll his OPS will bounce back to 850, 860. He'll hit his 25 home runs, depending on what happens in front of him. It's hard for a number two hitter to drive in a ton of runs. Okay, take it or leave it, guys. Does uh, Paul Goldschmidt sign a two-year extension within the next two months? Ooh, the next two months? Two years. Mm. Mm. I'm going to leave that. Okay. 
Now, I, I do believe the two-year extension. I could see that happening, but maybe not within the next two months. Yeah, I wonder how he and they would look at something with like a vesting option like Jordan Montgomery got where, okay, 450 at-bats and then next year kicks in or something That, that like would that. make some sense. I wonder if his representation would just say, no, if we're going to do this, we're going to do two years guaranteed and that's what we want. And he can DH for you Yep, at some point. Speaking of cornerstones, take it or leave it, Arenado isn't a Cardinal next summer. I'm going to leave that. I'm going to leave, leave that, that too. I wonder what the view of him is across Major League Baseball now after a down year by his standards and the fact he'll be 34, I think, this month, mm -hmm. either 33 or 34, where normally that's when you start to get close to hitting your decline. He's owed a bunch of money. What do you want to take on that salary? That's the thing. I believe the salary kicks in next year at a full $35 million. Sure. So I, I, I would think, especially at that position, there's young players available. And he's still got the no trade. There are player places that he doesn't want to go. I, I look at it just one place. Yeah. It's L.A. Yeah, I think the uh, Dodgers. Dodgers, right? I right. agree with you. No snark contained in this one whatsoever. Take it or leave it. Tyler O'Neill and Jack, you need to say the last name for me, Brandy. It's uh, still March. Flaherty. Yes. Oh, Fla Jack Flaherty. It's those still March. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> those the Irishman. Two, yes, those two compete, battle it out for AL Comeback Player of the Year honors. Can you do that from switching leagues, though? You can. Does it still sure. apply? All right, ah. yeah. Yeah, Chris Carpenter won it here after pitching for Toronto in his career. So, yeah, he could... Uh, uh, yeah, I'll, I'll take that. Those two will battle. But you've got Stanton, you've got Trout, you've got so many candidates in the American League. It's really going to be difficult because Stanton and Trout and Judge, they all have more to come back from. Flaherty had a great spring. i got to be sold on him, though, in the regular season. Yeah. Don't believe what you see in spring. So I'm not a believer yet, so time will tell. I'm going to have to leave it, but maybe if we rephrase this, what do you think about them battling it out for the one that will hurt the Cardinals the most that have exited here recently? I would say that if Flaherty yep. succeeds at a high level, you, he, he's been a number one before. Now, granted, it was only for half a season, but if he flashes that form or anything close to it again, the Cardinals will say, man, we wish we had that. That's the one that stings. Yeah. You know, you talk about pitching and where you, you're at when you had to go sign some of these guys like Glenn, who starts tonight, or Lynn will start in the, against the Dodgers. You got Gibson. You know, some of the others that you went out and got, I don't know, man. If you had a good Jack Flaherty, that would look awfully nice in your rotation. A healthy Jack Flaherty. Mm -hmm. By the way, he pitches on Sunday for the Tigers against the White Sox, so he should get off to a good start. <laughs> White Sox. <laughs> Tioli, if the Cardinals had acquired Tyler Glass now, yesterday would have played out in an entirely different manner. Take that. Yeah, I'll take I'll it. Take it. <laughs> I wanted Tyler Glass out. Yeah. Now, I know what you're going to bring up, Randy, is because of the injuries yeah. and innings, all the different kind of stuff. But I wanted him. It made a lot of sense. Now, when you see what the Dodgers were able to do to get him, I don't think the Cardinals could have matched that. But, man, that would have been nice to have. I would have rather had Cease because he's delivered innings before. But would I rather have Tyler Glass now than what the Cardinals have now? Yes, because he's, from a talent standpoint, a front of the rotation guy. Doesn't that show where the Dodgers are at, though, that mm -hmm. they can give that kind of no? There's there's hardly any other team in the in the sport that can do what they did, which is to get a guy that's given you 125 innings, tops or whatever it is, and give him a hundred plus million dollar contract. Yeah, and just say we're okay with it. Yeah, right. And, and that's the only team that, by the way, that he would have signed an extension with exactly when he got traded. So yeah, and the Dodgers do an amazing job, an incredible job of making pitchers better. When they got Lance Lynn last year, they they made him better. They've they've got a lot of instances where they have made pitchers better, and the Cardinals just don't have that evidence. Recently. Uh, thank you, Bradford. Coming up next, Darius Shepard of the Battlehawks, who get things started tomorrow night or tomorrow in Michigan. Darius Shepard is next on 101 ESPN. You want to say something? Then say it. Use the mic drop feature in the 101 ESPN app. Search the 101 ESPN app now in the App Store or Google Play.
I'm a good person. I pay my taxes. And then, right when I get my refund check, bam, car dealers want it for a down payment. Well, not this year. All you need is 29 bucks at Frank Lita Mitsubishi in the automotive outlet in Bridgeton. Every vehicle, just $29 down. Get huge discounts on all remaining 2023s and acres of pre-owned. But I'm worried about my credit. Do you have a job? Yes. Got $29? Yes. That's all you need at Frank Lita Mitsubishi. Plus, any trades accepted, even if you still owe thousands. Get 0% financing on new Outlanders. 0% for 60 months. All you need is $29 down. Yeah, not your entire tax refund. <laughs> Lane home weekdays from 2 to 6 p.m. with Anthony Stalter, Jamie Rivers, and Gary Davis on 101 ESPN. Two former pros and one average Joe. The fast lane is driven by Scrap Mart Metals Recycling. Your exclusive home of St. Louis Blues Hockey. WXOS, WXOS HD1 East St. Louis, 101 ESPN. Live from the Car Shield Studio, this is the opening drive on 101 ESPN. With Brooke Grimsley and Dan McLaughlin, I'm Randy Carricker. It is great to have you with us on the opening drive here on 101 ESPN and your St. Louis Battlehawks of the UFL. Get things started tomorrow as they take on the Michigan Panthers in their opening game of the 2024 campaign. And joining us now is Battlehawks wide receiver Darius Shepard. Good morning, sir. How you doing? Good morning. Appreciate you having me on. Hey, we're excited to have you. How excited are you about tomorrow? And we're looking forward to it. Man. We've been in training camp the last you know, few weeks and ready to face somebody else now. Darius, now I know you guys are sharing the road, but I thought this was very interesting. We heard from a little birdie named uh, Stoli. He gave us this note that you came to St. Louis a few weeks ago on your own time and made a visit to Cardinal Glennon. What was that experience like, and why did you want to come here and visit? Yeah, you know, I really want to get a part of the community. After they showed us so much love last year, I just felt like it's a, it's a great sports town, and um, we wanted to come and try to give back. So we went to Cardinal Glennon. Uh, met up with the kids and got to visit them and it was really nice just to see them and try to brighten their day and uh, they ended up actually taking some cleats and customize, customizing them for me so I'm excited to uh, get to show those off in pregame this week. Do you get sick of training camp? Are you ready to go and fire this thing up? Yeah man it's felt like it's forever to finally get to a, a game game one so we're all ready to go and uh, light it up in Michigan. It should be a fun event. How different do you think the UFL is going to be than the XFL was last year? Uh, I think it'll be a, a, a unique thing, you know, merging the USFL and the XFL together. Uh, I think everybody's in it to make this the best league possible. And um, I'm excited to see the competition, you know, having both leagues finally together and see, you know, who's really the top dog. Shepard, you quickly got to work as one of the top receivers in the league last year. Obviously, you and A.J. McCarron had such a great connection together. How excited are you that he was returning? And what has trading camp been like being back with him? Yeah, really excited, man. He's a he's a leader of this team. It's it's been awesome to to get to play with him and learn from him. Uh, we kicked it off like we hadn't missed a step from last year. So training camp's been a lot of fun, making a lot of plays, and we added a lot of explosive pieces to the team as well. So I'm excited to see what the product looks like on game day. Well, you said you learned from him. What do you what do you take away from AJ? Oh, uh, just how he sees the field. You know, his experience. You know, playing at Bama, playing in, with Cincinnati, Houston, all the places he's been, and the different ways he's ran routes and, and seen things. It just helps me um, grow my game and expand my skill set. Darius, you've been in camp with the Packers and the Chiefs, among other NFL teams. Who's the most impressive NFL quarterback you've been around? Ooh, that's a tough one. Uh, it's definitely up between uh, Mahomes and Rodgers. I mean, it's hard to, to beat those two. So what would differentiate them? It, it is. It's hard to differentiate, but what would? Uh, you know, it's tough because there's such that age gap between the two. Um I don't know. Mahomes' instinct and his competitive drive is crazy, but you can't take it away from Rodgers either. So it's really hard to say who's, who's better out of those two, man. Well, speaking of the NFL, I'm sure that you guys have talked about this a lot, but the NFL adopting a new kickoff rule this season that looks awfully familiar to something that we saw in the XFL. <laughs> what do you think about the NFL taking inspiration from the XFL now turned UFL? Yeah, that was super surprising to see. Um, It'll be fun to follow along and, and see if that sticks in the NFL. I hope it does. I think it was a pretty cool and exciting way to, to do the kickoff return play because I think everyone's getting bored of just seeing touchback after touchback. 
you got to be a crazy a crazy man to play on special teams. You ever played special teams? Yeah, I grew up always returning. So, you know, thankfully I get to run with the football. But those guys up front doing the dirty work, man, I really appreciate it. <laughs> so, but it, this is really different, and, and it's unique. And I actually like the, 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 the UFL, XFL kickoff rule. I know it, it looked weird off the bat. How difficult was that as an adjustment for you to have so much space back there as a kickoff returner? Yeah, you really nail it. That's the biggest thing. There's so much room. So it's like you have so many options, but you got to just stick to the game plan, uh, trust your blocks, and, and trust your instincts. So I'm, I'm looking forward to, a, a, again, a new style of kick return and seeing what we can make happen. Well, I know a lot of fans are looking forward to April 6th when you guys face the Renegades here at home at the Dome. What are you expecting from the fans this season, and what was that experience like just last year, just seeing the Dome and how electric it was? Yeah, people ask about it all the time. What an unbelievable place to play. Uh, I know all the uh, all the guys that I know on other teams are excited to come to our f uh, facility and play in, in St. Louis. So uh, I think the fans are going to show out. Hopefully we break record numbers, you know, 40, 50,000 this year, and uh, it's going to be um, a, a loud dome. I know that. Darius Shepard from the St. Louis Battlehawks is our guest. As fans, we get a little peek behind the curtain during hard knocks and watching an NFL training camp. And with all due respect, some of the guys look miserable because it's hot. You guys are hitting. It's full contact. Is it miserable? Is it fun? What, what's your take on a camp? <laughs> I mean, there's always going to be that hard work aspect, but I think Coach Beck does a great job making it fun for us. I mean, he's a former player. He gets it. Um, he's all about his guys. So he makes camp very enjoyable. Hey, Darius, tell us about that wide receiver room. And the, the Battle Hawks have said, hey, we have the best wide receiver room in the league. Tell us about your group. Yeah, we have a lot of studs in the room, um, a lot of competitors. Uh, I'm excited to see us uh, get out there in the field and what we can do. You know, a lot of unselfishness, so it's going to be really cool. You, you, they used to have, what, the greatest show on turf. We're trying to be 2.0 of that. <laughs> we love that. Hey, a couple more things. Number one, uh, you're a product of North Dakota State. It's really a football dynasty. What is it about North Dakota State that allows them and you to succeed at such a high level all the time? Yeah, I think there's a, a great amount of leadership there, and then guys just trust the process. You know, you do things the right way, it's going to work out for you in the in the long run. And you had a, a ton of talent there. Obviously, you, you were catching passes from Trey Lance. You had other uh, NFL players there. It, it's kind of astounding to me how many NFL players they, they produce. Is that coaching, or is that the, the athletes that are getting recruited? And, and not just NFL players, but you in the, in the UFL. There's a lot of pro players coming out of that program. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I think it goes hand in hand. You know, the, the coaches do a great job coaching the players and recruiting guys that are going to come in there and, and buy into the program. And then, again, you know, they get the right talent. If guys can uh, develop and, and do their thing, they're going to have a shot at the next level. So it's just a, it's a great program. I'm blessed to have had the chance to get to go there, and I look forward to seeing what they do in the future. Maybe they'll end up, you know, moving up to – uh, SBS at some point. That'd be really exciting. Yeah. Hey, Darius, one more thing. Because you have a new league, and the Michigan Panthers played last year, but uh, it, it was a different league. How much information do you have about the team that you're going to face tomorrow? Yeah, you know, we got to watch some film from last year in the USFL. Uh, obviously, it's a new year, new players. Uh, so, you know, week one's always kind of what are they going to bring to the table? What are they going to do different? So we're going to go out there and just uh, trust our training and, and let the rest unfold. The game's going to be on Fox tomorrow. I believe that St. Louis will be completely invested tomorrow at, at 2 o'clock. We're looking forward to it. Uh, actually, 3 o'clock St. Louis time. Hey, Darius, thanks so much for the time. Have a great game tomorrow. We can't wait to see you guys when you come home on April 6th. Oh, yeah, we really look forward to being out there. Appreciate you all. You guys have a great weekend. You too, Darius. Thank you very much. Darius Shepard from the St. Louis Battlehawks. And uh, Brooke, as you mentioned, he came into town on his own dime, on his own time, and made that visit to Cardinal Glenn and bought a pair of cleats and had all the kids that he visited at Cardinal Glenn and Children's Hospital sign them. And he's going to wear them pregame tomorrow, and then he's going to get back to Cardinal Glenn and Children's Hospital, which is amazing. I can't wait to see what those cleats look like, but I think that's really important. That was just personally, and I'm very excited about the Battle Hawks, but that was personally one of my biggest concerns is the fact that they're based in Arlington. How much will we, will we be able to see these players? How involved would they be in the community? And so you hear that story that he took the time to come here mm -hmm. and especially go visit Cardinal Glennon and do that. That just really means, I think, so much to me, but also I know others in the St. Louis community. Not to put you guys on the spot here too much but do we know how ticket sales are going for the opener they are hoping i believe they're they think they're going to get more than 50 hopefully they really we can get to 60 yeah no kidding oh, yeah and what's yeah. that hole now 60 66 okay 66 Wow, that would be amazing for a UFL game. Yeah, and we look at our situation here in St. Louis. You guys think spring football is going to work long term? I do. 
I think so. And I think it's very interesting. We talked about how the NFL is taking inspiration from the UFL. Mm -hmm. And I know it was more XFL last year where that kickoff rule came from. But still, I think that that is something to watch as well, is that that's something that the NFL is doing, is they're taking inspiration from them. And maybe that helps grow the game and there will be more connections down the road. I just don't think people can get enough of it. I agree. No. Of just enough. I mean, they're putting now, it's becoming commonplace to put spring football games on ESPN or on ESPN2 and hype them up. And not only are their fan bases watching, but the nation is watching. If people weren't watching, they wouldn't put it on television. And that home opener, 7 o'clock on April 6th, is on ABC. Yes. And ESPN. So it's, well, ESPN uh, Plus. So... Think about that, that it's going to be on free network television, the the XFL. They have embraced gambling, and legalized gambling changes a lot of things. And now is their time, because, again, we're a different city. But most of America really doesn't care about baseball anymore, and they love football. So a game like that, uh, or tomorrow, 3 o'clock, if people are in bad weather— they love this is a country that loves to watch football. The reason too, I think that you just hit it on the head. It's on television. You're mm-hmm. you're, you're going to be flipping around your TV and see it. And if you're a football fan, a casual fan, you're probably stopping at least at least watch five ten minutes of it. You might get hooked. Yeah. Now, I, I will point out that that seven o'clock game here in St. Louis on ABC is going against the Final Four. <laughs> <laughs> so that's a little tough. Yeah, but yeah, but still. It, it is football. With all due respect to all the other sports, football is America's sport now. They'll get a rating. Yeah, they will. I mean, they definitely will get a rating. There's going to be somebody that stops and watches that game across yeah. the board. And there are going to be numbers of, of people, the, the great numbers of people that stop and watch football. Yeah. Another thing, too, that is a big thing if you want to go to the game is that the tickets are affordable. So I'm looking at it right now. There's still tickets available where you can be right there, right close to the action for $52. The 400 level, there's still some spots available. You can get tickets for up there for $18. Great. So it's really hard to even go to a sporting event now where you could find a ticket for that price. Yeah. By the way, I had a friend yesterday that works downtown, walked across the street over to the ballpark and bought tickets for opening day. I think we always assume that opening day for the Cardinals is sold out. It's not. And if you'd like to get tickets, you can go to Cardinals.com or just go down to the ballpark and avoid the service fees and pick them up at the window. Does uh, soccer play that night in St. Louis on that Saturday? I believe they do. The April 6th. Yeah. Yeah. Yep. So, so that's going to be a, a fun busy, downtown. Busy night. It'll be yeah. wild and crazy. That's Dan. That's Brooke. I'm Randy. Coming up here on 101 ESPN, we've got Joe Vitale. He is coming your way. Stick around. Coverage of 101 ESPN is presented by Under Law Injury Lawyers. Get Jim.com. Meet Sumner One, your go-to source for all things office technology. We're proud to be one of the largest independently owned providers in the region with 11 strategic locations across five states. At Sumner One, we specialize in workplace solutions, enterprise print, production print, large format solutions, cutting edge document technology, and more. Quality, service, and innovation. That's the Sumner One advantage. Visit us online at SumnerOne.com. That's S-U-M-N-E-R one.com. Sumner One, welcome to the one place where everything works. Auto Center's Nissan Herculaneum. They've got over 700 vehicles all in one location. You can start at AutoCenter'sNissan.com. You can peruse the vehicles that they have right there online and then head out to Auto Center's Nissan Herculaneum and you can test drive new vehicles. How about a new Nissan Altima up to $4,000 off MSRP? Finance for only $4.99 down and only $4.99 a month for 84 months. It's not a lease and that offer is good throughout the month of March. They got great deals on other vehicles as well. Not just new 
Nissans. They have pre-owned vehicles, too. So if you're looking for cars, trucks, SUVs, Auto Centers, Nissan, Herculaneum, they've got it right there in one location. 30-day new car return promise, complimentary lifetime warranty, complimentary one-year maintenance as well, all courtesy of Auto Centers, Nissan, Herculaneum. By Sumner One. Joey Vitale views things a little differently. Just imagine how he looks at hockey. Whoa! This is the view from Vitale, brought to you by Scott Lee Heating Company, a proud Mitsubishi Electric Elite contractor. Blues with the win last night over the Calgary Flames over at Enterprise Center. Joey Vitale joins us now here on 101 ESPN. Uh, Joey V, let's start with this. You played in the NHL for a long time. You were around a lot of Canadians. First of all, good morning, I guess, I guess I should say. How are you doing, sir? Hey, it's okay. I appreciate your morning, as always. Uh, so Mike Keenan always said Calgary. So I picked that up, and I call them Calgary. Does anybody else call it Calgary? I think you're the only person I've ever heard call it Calgary. I'll be honest with you. Uh, yeah, I always get a chuckle out of it, but to me, it's always been Calgary. I've never heard any other word talking about you. Uh, and I stole it from the, the hated Mike Keenan, so maybe I should drop this <laughs> this facade. <laughs> I think, I think uh, with all things considered about who you got it from as well, I think it's something we... Uh, it probably wouldn't hurt you if you dropped it. <laughs> okay, I will. It's Calgary henceforth. You like henceforth? <laughs> Henceforth, that's a that's a great that's a great word. Is that, is that a one word? Or is that two two it's, separate words? I believe it's one word. Henceforth, yeah. Okay. Uh, well, oh, Shakespearean, that. is it? Okay. Very much so. Very, okay. Uh, the other thing, Joey V, I was thinking about you last night because because I was flipping between our game and the Minnesota University of Minnesota game with Jimmy Snuggerud. You played college hockey. How? And he plays tomorrow night, so he would be able to come if the Blues would sign him. And we don't know if they would, but he would have seven or eight games to play. How difficult? is the adjustment from college hockey to the National Hockey League? Hey, listen, it's it's very, very difficult. I mean, very difficult. I mean, look at look at a player like Zachary Bolduc to give fans a little perspective on uh, a more recent one. But, you know, Zachary Bolduc, you know, he, he ripped out junior hockey before coming into this year turning pro. And, you know, he, he had his struggles in the minors and the AHL. And then now he's starting to find a little bit of a groove in the NHL, but it, but it's taken him a full year of playing minor league hockey. And, you know, that's why I think the American league is so important for players because, you know, you hear the, you hear the term minors and they, Oh, it's kind of a washed up league. The, the American hockey league, and of course the blues affiliate in Springfield, it is the second best league in the world. It's just, it's a fact. I mean, it's a tough league. You're around, you know, future all-stars, future pros, you're around guys that have been, you know, at the tail end of their careers that are doing it for a living. I talked to Zach Redeen about this the other day. It's an adjustment coming from junior like he did. You're playing with guys on your line that have you know, wives and, and kids that do this for a living. Um, you learn to take it up a whole nother level. And it's just a different speed. It's a different intelligence. It's a big step. It's a big, big step. And I know that 
there are the exceptions out there, the Jack Eichels that go to BU and then they turn pro and, and they're just all stars right away, the Connor McDavid's. But but look at look at even, you know, the, the bona fide uh, incredible players like Nathan McKinnon. It took Nathan McKinnon really four, four to five years to really get his roots into this league before he exploded on the offensive scene. So it, it's going to be tough for Jimmy. It's going to be an adjustment. You know, Robert Thomas, it took him about a year, year or so to really get, get into the groove. And now he's in year six, and now he's become, you know, one of the best defensive forwards in the National Hockey League. But it took six years for a first rounder in Robert Thomas. So, you know, I know everyone's excited about Jimmy Snuggerud. I'm excited. He's got a great release. He's going to bring some offensive power. But the reality is it's going to take him some time as well. Well, Joey, a good win for the Blues last night against the Flames. And we talk about Jordan Bennington and everything he's done all season long. And he really can do it all, considering he had two assists last night. I'm surprised he didn't score a goal as well. Is he going to catch up with Curtis Joseph's 17 career assists at this point? I don't know if he's going to catch up with that, <laughs> uh, Brooke. You know, we, we, Curbs and I were talking about that last night on the broadcast. And, and he, he did a heck of a job. He pulled that number right out of his hat as, as Jordan Bennington got that first assist. And he mentioned 17 as a blue. And I ended up doing a little research during the game. It was, it was pretty incredible. Curtis Joseph had 31 career assists in his, you know, between all the teams, the, the Maple Leafs and the Coyotes and the Blues and all the other teams he was a part of. So 31 assists, you know, pretty, pretty amazing for a goaltender to get that many. And if you go back to the 91-92 Blues season, he actually had nine assists in the one season alone. So, I mean, I think a lot of fourth line players in that era would have been very happy to get nine points that season. And he did it as a goaltender, you know, so I, I don't know if, if, if it's in the cars necessarily for Jordan Bennington from a point standpoint, but I think that when it comes to, you know, games played and wins, I, I think you're looking at a goaltender that uh, is, is trying to build on his legacy and he is going to give Curtis Joseph and Liute and all the greats here, uh, he's going to give them a run for their money. And I know that that has been a focus after talking to Dave Alexander about the mindset of Bennington, especially these last couple of years since this Blues team has struggled. Uh, his mindset, uh, he's been very good. You know, you look at, look at goalies like John Gibson for the Anaheim Ducks. Anaheim Ducks have been a struggling team for a very long time. You know, John Gibson is a goalie right now in the league that it is so blatantly obvious, and he knows it's obvious, and apparently he doesn't care. But he, he just does not bring – he doesn't bring the, the energy and he doesn't bring the competitiveness every single night. And he has this lethargic nature about him. And, and you can look at the flip side of like, well, yeah, he's been a part of a struggling team. He's probably wanted to be traded for a while. But you know what? Bennington's been a, been a part of a struggling team for the last couple of seasons. This team has not been great defensively in spurts. And, and you're looking at a goaltender that is in the prime of his career – that he should be in the Vesna conversation, along with Jacob Marsham, another goalie on a struggling team. But what's amazing about Bennington is he's been able to keep such a positive attitude, and he's got the big picture in mind. And one of that big picture items is for him is to continue to build upon the Blues' legacy. And, and if I'm Jordan Bennington, and I haven't had this conversation with him, but from what it sounded like from Dave Alexander, he's thinking one day he'd like to have number 50 up in the rafters. And, and to me, that's, that's what motivates him every single day, even when the team is struggling for him to continue to focus on what he's focused on and put this team in a decent position to make a push every single year. Joey V, you're a good NHL player. You had a, you got on the power play a few times, got a couple of power play assists, had an assist on a, on a uh, shorthanded goal, had 27 career assists. Are, are you a little bit jealous of Cujo? Listen, if I'm, <laughs> if I'm in a deck game last night, and I am, let's just say, if I'm Casper Kapanen and I'm looking at my goalie getting two assists and I was left for an over last night, I'm mad. Like, I'm, you got to be kidding me. You got to be kidding me. I, I would go home. I would be so good. It, it'd be no different than if, like, the Edmonton Oilers win a game 8-1 to and Connor McDavid got no points. I'd be like, he'd be like, okay, come on. Really? We scored eight goals and I couldn't get a point? That's, that's, that's how I would approach it if, if, I'm, um, if I'm a player on the team. Especially, I mean, one assist is one thing, but to get two assists... You know, in my era, all the all the fourth line fighters and all the kind of crazy uh, shenanigans going on in the fourth line, they would be bitter to think that a goaltender got more points in that game than uh, than me. Right? Yeah, I'd be a little bit chapped. Hey, Joey, regardless of, of whether or not the Blues make the playoffs and still mathematically alive and making these games fun and intense down the stretch, what do you think it does with some of these young players, a Kessel, a Bolduc, a Dean, guys that have a chance to play a little bit in what would be a somewhat of a playoff atmosphere? Dan, I can't, I can't overemphasize how important this stretch has been for the young players. They're, they're getting a little snippet 
of what playoff hockey is like, you know, for them right now, as they enter into this game tomorrow night against the San Jose Sharks, they're entering into a meaningful hockey game in March. That you, you just can't put a price tag on that because there are so many teams right now with young players, developing players, uh, the future of franchises that are entering games that are just meaningless games. And, and the difference is you come to the game with a meaningful game for Matthew Kessel, for Zachary Dean tomorrow night. You got these butterflies. You got this anticipation. There's an intensity to the coaches' talk before the game. There's an intensity to warm up. You see it around the locker room and the veterans that know the importance of the game. I mean, the pressure amps up, you know, and pressure makes diamonds, and that's where they're being a part of right now. They're being a part of that pressured environment where they know that, you know, every play they make, every intentional mistake that's made uh, can either help you or hurt you. And, and to me, that's what is so valuable about this time. And it's really valuable that – you know, Dan, these young players, a lot of them have taken a big step in this environment. To me, is it's huge. You look at Matthew Kessel. I thought he was the best defenseman last night. The way he closed gaps, I think he forced like two or three offsides as, you know, the rush from the Calgary Flames was coming at him. You know, he was terrific. Bull Duke gets his second of his career. And Zachary Dean in his debut on home ice, I thought he played with speed. He had some offensive shots in the net. A couple of things went wide. But you saw him, his motor was starting to go there too. So, you know, you go back to the Bennington thing, and this is where it is so important to have a goalie in a transitional phase of your, your franchise like the Blues have right now. I mean, the last couple of years, you know, and if they miss the playoffs again this year, but you have a goaltender that is keeping you in it until the very end. And I know if the Blues don't get in this year, you know, you, but you can still look at these last two weeks and leading up to the next three weeks. You can look at them not as playoff games, but definitely something pretty close to that where you're playing meaningful hockey late in the season. And to me, again, you go down two, three years down the road, and then all of a sudden you have a just a, a juggernaut of a Blues team, and you have you know Jake Neighbors is going to be your assistant captain next to Robert Thomas, and you have Matthew Castle on the top pair with Colton Pareko. You know, you're going to look at a team, maybe Joel Holford at the times in the net. You're going to look at that team, and you're going to ask those players as they're entering the third round of the playoffs, hey, talk about the last four, you know, about, about getting here. I guarantee you those young players are going to mention Jordan Bennington. They're going to mention uh, those veteran players that kept them in a spot over the last three seasons that seasoned them really well to get used to meaningful playoff hockey. Even though they didn't make it, maybe the times are going long runs. Just the, the spark that they got – and having a goaltender like Bennington that's kept them in until the very end, they're going to look back, and I promise you, they're going to say it was because of that guy, it was because of that team, it was because of that time that set us up for where we are right now. All right, Joey V, one last thing before we let you go. You and the Blues will be in Anaheim on April 7th, then you'll fly home. And on April 8th, we have a total solar eclipse, and we're close to the path of totality. As a guy who's very curious, what about the upcoming solar eclipse on April 8th has you curious about it? Well, I'm, I'm excited to see. Is this where it gets kind of dark throughout the day? Is yes. Almost, okay, yeah. so this happened about, I want to say like six years ago. You remember when this happened? Mm -hmm. And uh, it happened only in St. Louis was actually in, in the really good path for it. And what I'm interested to see is if the animals get confused and they think it's nighttime. When, when this happened six years ago, it got dark briefly. And then you start to hear like the frogs and like those crickets and all like those nighttime bugs start to come alive. I, I almost want to see like what's going to happen. Are we going to start seeing some bats fly around during the day because they think it's nighttime? We have a bat box in my front yard. We used to have a big mosquito problem. And I used to get this mosquito company to come over. And then someone told me the mosquito is not really good for your kids. They roll around the glass. So we got this big box. It's basically this wood box. Have you ever seen these things? No. It's just like a it's like a big twelve inch box, and it just you stick it in your yard, and it's basically a house for bats. And they they um, they just kind of hang around, and they're actually the nature's best uh, mosquito repellent because you know yeah it's a little weird we have a lot of bats in our front yard when the kids are outside playing, but they don't bother you, and they don't like carry rabies. I don't think so at least it's not going to bother you as a, as a kid, but unless you bother them, of course. But they're flying up in the air. Mm -hmm. But they're, they'll, they'll attack those mosquitoes, and they'll, they'll kill those mosquitoes. So, you know, it'd be interesting to see when that happens, Randy. I'm going to be keeping a close eye on my bat box out in the front yard and see if any bats fly around. Yeah, good for you. And we are uh, Missouri. Poplar Bluff is in that path of totality. We are just east of or just west of the path of totality. But we're going to be pretty close. We're going to – it's going to get dark here in St. Louis, so it'll be fun. 
I'm really looking forward to that. We're going to get a blanket in our front yard, and uh, like I said, we'll be home for it. So it's going to be it's going to be some exciting times. And whenever you whenever you start incorporating space into my world, my mind starts going in lots of directions. So I'm excited. Don't forget to get those eclipse glasses. Oh yeah, because you can't look at it without that, right? right? You go burn your eyeballs. Okay, yeah, make sure I tell them. <laughs> All right. Well, that's going to be a challenge trying to keep those on my kids. You know, that's, that's a whole other ball game. I have a rough time telling them to keep their underwear on when they're running around the house. So this is going to be a uh, this is going to be a whole new, a whole new game for me. Joey V, have a a great, a good month, Friday, and a, a wonderful Easter to you and your family. Yeah, you guys as well. Always a pleasure talking to you three, and you guys have a wonderful weekend. Happy Easter. You too, brother. That's Joe Vitale with us on 101 ESPN. You got to get something. You got to be intrigued with Joey's curiosity, don't you? I am always intrigued by Joey's curiosity, his thoughts, everything. He's got a bat box in his yard. I think Joey's intrigued with Joey's curiosity. I, I, <laughs> He's awesome. always curious. That's the coming up, we yeah. we've got the fight. Who's coming back? What's the guy's name? That would be William. William. And there is a surging justice for Randy movement online, oh, too. I can't no. imagine okay. why. I can't uh, imagine. Oh, hey, no. It, it we is what it is. That. Right? It happens. Let's not worry about it. Uh, coming up next year, I, I'm not worried about it. It could set up for one you of the sure greatest comebacks. Oh, we have a segment for that. We do. Coming up, uh, we, we've got the annual uh, 930 greatest comebacks ever. And you can determine for yourself why we, we, we would have that today. But that's coming your way later in the show. But the fight is next, and uh, we'll bring it to you here on 101 ESPN. So March continues this week on 101 ESPN with Sweet 16 and Elite 8 action. March Mayhem on 101 ESPN is courtesy of Salika Heating and Cooling, your independent American Standard Heating and Air Conditioning dealer. See our entire March Madness schedule now at 101ESPN.com.
You can now watch 101 ESPN live on our Air Alliance Team Studio Cams. Catch every show live on our YouTube channel or at 101ESPN.com. 101 ESPN Studio Cams. Presented by the Air Alliance Team Heating and Cooling. Getting the job done quickly, correctly, 100% of the time. 101 ESPN Sports Center. Blues extinguish flames downtown. I'm Bradford Bruns, and this Sports Center update is brought to you by Saliga Heating and Cooling. Last night at Enterprise Center, the no toppled Calgary 5 to 3, setting up another big tilt tomorrow versus San Jose. Puck drop happened shortly after 70101 ESPN. One hour earlier, Alex Ferrario and our last guest, Joey Vitale, will bring you the pregame festivities. Game number two of the Cardinals season, meanwhile, unfolds this evening. Zach Thompson receives the start in Los Angeles. The Dodgers just hammered St. Louis 7-1 to as Miles Michael has surrendered five runs across four-plus innings. Other preliminary finals, Chicago edges Texas 4-3 to despite losing Justin Steele to a hamstring ailment. Cincinnati blows out Washington 8-2, to and Arizona absolutely destroys Colorado 16-1. to This Sports Center update was brought to you by Saliga. Heating and cooling, an independent American standard heating and air conditioning dealer. 1 ESPN. Welcome to the fight. In the red corner, average Joe listener. And in the blue corner, the undisputed king of morning drive. Please welcome Randy Carricker. Welcome back to the opening drive. Brooke, Dan, and Brunzi here, and it is time for the fight today. And there was a little bit of controversy yesterday, but we don't have to rehash that. We don't have to talk about it whatsoever, but we are bringing back William for round two of the fight to take on Randy. How are you doing today, William? I'm doing just fine. How are you feeling after all that yesterday? Well, I kind of felt bad yesterday. I, I actually, after you give Randy's answer, I was going to... I should have just given the same one. We went to another tiebreaker. But uh, I already had in my mind my answer, and I just blurted it out. So <laughs> hey. I, it, would have been, it would have been right just to give Randy the same answer after he said that. But I totally forgot. No. <laughs> First of all, you didn't feel bad about it, okay? That, let's just be honest. And that's okay. You, you won the fight. I'm always curious, when someone wins the fight, do they hear from, like, family, friends, coworkers? Do you ever hear from anybody after yesterday's win? Well, I had one of my friends call me and told me that uh, he was listening and uh, and told me that I should have uh, I should have lost. But he's hey. not a friend. <laughs> <laughs> that is great advice, Dan. I honestly, if I beat Randy in the fight one day, I'd yeah. walk around with a shirt. I would make a shirt and walk around everywhere with it. I did it. I did it. <laughs> <laughs> All right, you ready for round two, William? I sure am. Question number one. With last night's 72-69 to win over Iowa State, Illinois is back in the Elite Eight for the first time since 2005. Name the team's leading scorer that season. Was it Darren Williams, D. Brown, or Luther Head? I believe it was D. Brown. Final answer there, William? Yeah. Okay, question two. Pash Rusher, Judavian Clowney, has agreed to a two-year, $20 million contract with the Carolina Panthers. Clowney was the top pick of the 2014 draft by the Texans. Who was the first QB to come off the board that year? Was it Johnny Manziel, Blake Bortles, or Teddy Bridgewater? Ooh. Uh... I believe it was Manziel. Final answer? Final answer. Off to question three. Tomorrow night on 101 ESPN, the Blues face off against the Sharks. Can you tell us San Jose's all-time leader in assists? Is it Joe Thornton, Joe Pavelski, or Patrick Marlowe? Oh, man, Thornton was there a long time. Pavelski put up some numbers. Uh, I'm going to go with Pavelski. Okay, question four. Yesterday afternoon, Paul Goldschmidt accounted for all three of the Cardinals' hits against the Dodgers, including a fourth-inning home run. When was Goldie's most recent 30 home run season? Was it 2019, 2022, or 2023? 
2022. All right. William, we have the four answers in the books. We're going to go grab Randy right now. I'll grab him here. I'll grab him. You guys have a nice chat. <laughs> William, how are you feeling after that? Uh, I think Randy gets revenge today. Oh, you think he's going to come back in this one? Brenzi, how are you feeling for this second round of the fi fight? Can we say cautiously optimistic? <laughs> cautiously Does that optimistic. work? <laughs> you never know what's going to happen. Oh, and well, it's he's Friday. Feeling it, though. He's feeling it. And he has his bag of grapes, of course, and propel to propel him forward today. Yes. Randy, say hi to William again. William, welcome back. How are you doing today? I'm doing good, Randy. How are you? Doing well. Thanks for listening. Thanks for playing. We appreciate it. All, All right. right. Round two. Here we go. Ready okay. for question one, Randy? Ready. With last night's 72 to 69 win over Iowa State, Illinois is back in the Elite Eight for the first time since 2005. Name the team's leading scorer that season. Uh, I'm going to go with D. Brown. I'll go with D. Brown from that Illinois squad. You know, I oh, should I go with D. Brown or uh, the, the shooting guard that played for the. Uh, Jazz. Uh, D. Brown was a point guard. What was that guy's name? Uh, I don't remember off the top of my head. So I'll just I'll just go with D. Brown. Pass rusher Jadavian Clowney. You know him, Randy. He's been around, you know. He's agreed to a two-year, $20 million contract with Carolina. Mm -hmm. Clowney was the top pick in 2014 by the Texans. Mm -hmm. Who was the first QB to come off the board that year? 20... Uh, what 14. Was it? 14. So Greg Robinson was the second pick in that draft. I think that might have been the Blake Bortles year. I'll go with Blake Bortles of the Jacksonville Jaguars. On to question three. Jaguars. Okay. Tomorrow night on 101 ESPN, the Blues face off against the Sharks. Can you tell us San Jose's all time leader in assists? All time leader in assists. I would think. Jumbo Joe Thornton would be the guy. He was a big assist guy and played there forever. So I'm going to go with Jumbo Joe Thornton. Are you ready for question four? I am, Dan. Randall, yesterday afternoon, Paul Goldschmidt accounted for all three of the Cardinals' hits against the Dodgers. Hmm. He also had a fourth inning home run. Hmm. When was Goldie's most recent 30 homer season? 30 home run season. Um... Did he hit 30 in his MVP year of 2022, or did he hit 29? I thought he hit 30, but maybe not. Uh, but you know what? I'm going to throw uh, 2022 in there as, uh, yeah, let's see. Did he? Had a 912 OPS. Drove in a bunch of runs. Yeah, I'll go with that. I'll go with 2022. You're going with 2022. I am. 2023 was that. I'm going to go with his MVP year. Got it. Okay. Yeah. Bradford. Okay, crew. On this good Friday, is it a clean Friday? Are we able to go into the weekend on a positive note for all parties involved? I can confirm that will be the case as far as a clean victory, but to whom will it go? Ring that bell. The winner and still champion of the fight, Randy Carricker. The fight is presented by Golf Discount of St. Louis with the most experienced club fitters in town. Why shop anywhere else? And when Randy did, William, good effort once again, your second consecutive day on the contest here. But Randy nailed you by the score of three to one, sir. Okay, thanks, guys. You've got it, Thank William. Thank you, William. Let's run over these results, shall we? Starting with number one, the Illini, of course, last night, guys, big time, 72-69. to 69. Victory over Iowa State, contrasting styles there. The Illinois team comes out on top. Back in 2005, the last time that Illinois made the Elite Eight, who was the team's leading scorer? We had some options here in the form of the great point guard, Williams, D. Brown, or... Our ultimate answer, actually, it was Luther Head that year. 15.9 oh. points per game. Four different players from that squad ultimately ended up securing some NBA time. Question number two, the pass rusher, Jadavian Clowney. He eschews returning to the Baltimore Ravens in favor of returning home, really, a to shoes? the Panthers. Yeah. Wow. Yeah, there you go. <laughs> I always get a, like an encyclopedia of, you know, know. Of, of a reference here that I need to look up. It, it just flows clearly. I'm he was, telling you. <laughs> he was the top pick of the 2014 
2014 draft actually attended that combine. That was Shoot. one to behold back in the day. The first QB, though, to go off of the board that year. Was it Manziel? Was it Blake Bortles? Was Shoot. it Teddy Bridgewater? <laughs> All like of whom. <laughs> All of whom were taken in the first round. Blake Bortles went number three overall to the Jaguars. And tomorrow night on 101 ESPN, the Blues dropping that puck against the last place Sharks. Question three, can you tell us the all-time leader in assists for the Sharks? Well, one, Joe Thornton owns a number of different career records for that franchise. 804 helpers overall. And finally, question number four, yesterday, Paul Goldschmidt with the three base knocks, including that home run, his last or most recent 30 home run season that occurred during the MVP campaign. Not only did he have 35 round trippers, but 115 runs batted in. Great fight. Thank you, Bradford. Appreciate it. Bradford's awesome. He is fantastic. He has shoes. I I want to use that at least once a day. I might struggle with it, but I'm going to find a way. Words of the day. Thank you. See, the H is actually silent in that case. It's a little known secret. Oh. Oh, of course, of course. How could I ever miss that? <laughs> I feel like we need a word of the day with Brunzi. Yeah. Ooh, that's that's intriguing. You tie them all into your sports updates. Yeah, I mean, you're, we you're try. amazing. <laughs> so coming up here on 101 ESPN, <laughs> they said, what? It's a Friday tradition unlike any other right here on the opening drive. Back up and say big on Everyday Essentials, now at Menards. We have it all from big to small and everything in between. Keep your devices powered with Energizer Max batteries. They deliver consistent performance and can hold power for up to 10 years while in storage. Energizer Max batteries are on sale now through March 31st. And don't forget to check out our flyer on Menards.com for all the other great deals happening now. Save big money at Menards. The choice of a lawyer is an important decision and should not be based solely on advertisements. If you've been injured in a car wreck, you need the best. Underlaw, voted 2023's best law firm in St. Louis. We know how to handle the insurance companies, and we'll make sure you're compensated for physical, emotional, and financial injuries. Let us make your case our cause. Car accident? Call Underlaw today for a free review. 314 or 618 9 million. That's 314 or 618 9 all zeros. My kids call me Tom. <laughs> so unnerving. Every day, the older one's like, how you doing, Tom? <laughs> I go, hey, I'm not your f***ing stepdad, all right? <laughs> I wish I was. It'd be a lot easier, but I'm not. From his multiple Netflix specials, comedian Tom Segura brings his new tour come together to the fabulous Fox Friday, October 18th. Reserve seats on sale Friday, March 29th at 10 a.m. at MetroTix.com or 314-534-1111. Travers GMT West and St. Louis RV has an emergency announcement. We're unleashing a massive hail sale. Our loss is your gain. Save thousands on a wide selection of pre-owned cars, trucks, SUVs, and both new and used RVs. Everything must go, and the savings are huge. Plus, we have fresh inventory without hail coming in daily. These incredible hail inventory deals won't stick around for long. Head over to GMT West and St. Louis RV, located at 70 and Bryan Road in O'Fallon, Missouri, or visit us online at gmtautowest.com or stlrv.net. This is one hail of a sale that won't last long. When something happens to your kitchen, you might say, This is ludicrous. But that won't fix your home. That will only get you the rapper, Ludicrous. Having trouble? Don't panic. Don't be alarmed. You need to file a claim? Holla at State Farm. Like a good neighbor, State Farm is there. That's right. You can file a claim on the app or call us. Thanks, Mr. Chris. No matter how ludicrous the situation, like a good neighbor, State Farm is there. State Farm, Bloomington, Illinois. Oh, 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 O'Reilly. Check engine light.
and ESPN is your home for Blues hockey. Every month during the season, you can check out either the 101 mobile app or 101ESPN.com for your chance to get entered to win for a pair of tickets to an upcoming Blues home game at Enterprise Center. New winners picked every month throughout the season for free tickets to see the Blues in action, courtesy of 101 ESPN. Get entered to win now online at 101ESPN.com or on your 101 mobile app. This is the opening drive on 101 ESPN, brought to you by Sumner One. What? Bro, what are you talking about, man? What you talking about? What the hell are you talking about? What you talking about? Do you actually listen to yourself when you speak, or do you find you drift in and out? What you talking about? Well, I'm out, man. It is time for They Said What? And guys, we knew that Miles Michaelis was going to get some attention for his comments about the Dodgers and their way of building a team, if you will. Just to recap, he said prior to the game, you've got the Dodgers playing checkbook baseball, and we're going to go out there and be the hardest working group of Midwestern farmers that we can be. It's great to go out there and stick it to the Dodgers. Now, of course, you're giving the Dodgers a lot to work with there. Here's the Dodgers broadcasters Joe Davis and Oral Hershiser discussing that quote. Michaelis provided some billboard material for the Dodgers coming into this opening day start. And they all might be a little extra focused because of that, Joe. Do you think you really saw this quote and care? I think people always looking for motivation. The checkbook team in some ways he was kind of putting it and boy oh boy yes you can go out and get great players and yes you can pay them well because they are great. You put them all together and you have the Dodgers. Mr. Michaelis was a little bit upset about that. That's a strike on Max Muncy. I will say this. I am buying a ticket to the movie that shows the game between the checkbook players and the Midwest <laughs> farmers. That sounds intriguing to me. It does sound intriguing. And here's Miles Michaelis after his not so great day on the mound yesterday. I don't think it's my worst opening day, um, but it's definitely not what you want. Um, you know, all jokes aside, I thought I made some good pitches. Um, just a couple I want back, you know, um, a lot of weak contact there in the first, you know, bloopers kind of, you know, blossoming through the infield there, you know, got to hang with them, um, you know, wish I had, you know, some of those home runs back. I think, you know, I didn't think Freddie hit is that good, um, but, you know, he got, he got enough of it, put a good swing on a, on a pitch that wasn't very sharp, um, you know, a lot of things I'd, Thought I did well today that, you know, that I'll try to remember and take note of, um, you know, some other stuff I didn't do, do so great. I'll, you know, do my best to work on it. Mm. 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 So. First of all, <laughs> the Freeman at bat in the first inning was what he was referring to. That right. was weak contact. The one that he hit the home run on was pretty good. Contact. That was pretty good. <laughs> that one was launched. That was yeah. a hanging breaking ball. Um, I love that. Miles is a fun guy. So mm -hmm. if you're around Miles, he's going to make some comments that make you laugh and make you think, maybe make you cry. But I will say this, um, you got to back it up. That's yeah. the only thing. If you if you come out and you say some things that are could be perceived as roughing the opposition's feathers, you, you got to back it up. But I, I had no problem with it. I think it's him just having a little fun. Especially if you know Miles Michaelis. He does joke around a lot. But, of course, when you go into that situation and you do talk a lot of smack, as you mentioned, Dan, you have to be able to back it up. And it gives a lot of people not only bulletin board material, but just a lot of different ways to tear you apart. And he also went on, John Ditton of MLB.com has this quote from him as well because this was was not on TV. This is a side conversation they had afterwards. Michaelis went on to say to reporters about his earlier money comments. Money talks, right? I ended up being on the losing side of that one. Talk a little smack here and there, and I don't think there's anything wrong with that. So is there anything wrong with that? Well, let me ask you guys this. Is it untrue what he said? No. I, they, they, they've got great players and they spend a ton of money. They just gave a guy $700 million. Yeah, that's kind of, you need a checkbook to do that. <laughs> right. So it is checkbook baseball to an extent. Now, once you have the great players, they all need to come together and they've got to win. But <laughs> you look at their lineup, man. It's yeah, insane. It is. It's Three check. MVPs. I mean, one after another. You get through one and you're like, oh, great. Now you have to face Shohei Otani. Oh, great. You have to face Freddie Freeman. And by the way, I thought Freeman looked obviously really, really good yeah. yesterday. And his, bets. his son was rattled by the flyover. <laughs> Did you see that? No. Oh, it was great. His, his son's looking all over the place wondering where the, the boom is coming from. Oh. And then he saw it and he 
his mouth opens. It was really fun. Like, he, he's not lying. I mean, they're, they're paying yeah, big players a lot of money. It is, it, it, they and the Mets are outrageously above everybody else. Yes. And you know what? If you can do it, more power to you. That's a great thing. They, and they the willingness can, to do it, too. Right, yeah. They can afford to give a guy who just had Tommy John surgery... A seven hundred million dollar contract. How often there's a lot of guys that don't come back from a second Tommy John surgery. They may have given a really good hitter, a Bryce Harper quality hitter, four thirty five. Let's say, yeah, let's yeah. just say four hundred. Yeah. 435, but then you add in the second Tommy John and expecting that's the other mm-hmm. half of the contract. Right, yeah. And, and hoping. For a 29-year-old guy for 10 years. Right. Here's the thing, though, and I completely agree with you guys. They have the money. They can spend it. They can do whatever they want with it because you don't have a salary cla- a cap or a salary floor in Major League Baseball. And I'm not saying is it fair or not, but is this really great for the game of baseball to have just one super powerful team with all the money in the world that they have? Here's why it is. Because in the last 13 years, the Dodgers have been first, second, or third in payroll. And they haven't won a full season World Series. The only World Series they won was in the in the pandemic year. So it's great that teams like the Arizona Diamondbacks can beat them in the playoffs and show that being smart and developing your own talent can allow you to win even though you didn't spend the most money. I'll disagree on this. I agree in the fact that you can have the, the craziness of baseball. I do wish, though that you had more of a parity within how you can spend the money. Yes. That, that's all. No maybe, doubt Maybe about you'd see that. a little different than what we're seeing now. I mean, the Dodgers are going to win their division. Yep. They're going to get in again. And here's the thing. The owners can get together and not have to collectively bargain a salary floor. They wanted a salary floor. But if I were the owners and uh, if I'm paying into revenue sharing, I want those teams to spend it. I want 100%. the Pirates or the Marlins or the, uh, the the Orioles. I want, if they're receiving revenue sharing money, I want them to spend it. So I, if I'm Bill DeWitt, I'm going to everybody and saying, hey, you know what? If we're going to give you guys money, you got to spend it on baseball players. It has to be on baseball players, minimum, let's say, of $100, 110000000 million yeah. payroll. Yeah. That's where I'm at. I think that's totally. fair, especially everything with the A's, as you guys mentioned, the Pirates. It just doesn't seem fair to have teams who are just not doing anything. They're pocketing at that point. the money, exactly. literally pocketing because the money. That's not great for the game. And that's where I give the Dodgers, if you want to give them credit, and the Mets and the Yankees to an extent, is that they have what I, I the willingness to do it. If they mm-hmm. wanted to sit there and put a bunch of money in their pockets, they could. Not to say that they aren't already, but if they wanted to take even more of that pie, they could. They have a willingness to spend. I give them credit for that. 100%. Now, I'm going to go back to Miles Michaelis just real quick. From the 941, I get that Michaelis wants to have fun and keep things light, but the fan base isn't exactly in a jovial, lighthearted mood. Get a five-game lead, then joke around. Well, I think that Michaelis realizes that he is in the entertainment business, and this is win or lose. We're in the toy store of life. You're supposed to have fun yep. with sports. You aren't. Your life and your mood should not, and many times it is defined by what happens with your favorite team, but it probably shouldn't be. And he's just trying to add a little levity to the situation. I, I don't have any problem with people that are trying to make sports entertainment. I think that's a good thing. Let's be honest. Do we really think that this was bulletin board material for the Dodgers? <laughs> no. They probably didn't even notice it, is they the thing. Yeah. No, yep. they really don't. Coming up here on 101 ESPN, Robert Thomas, Blues Center in action tomorrow against San Jose. He's coming your way on the opening drive. The Cardinals' home opener is this Thursday, and 101 ESPN will be broadcasting live from the Budweiser Brew House inside Ballpark Village. Opening day is finally here, and we'll be set up just steps away from Bush Stadium with the opening drive, BK and Ferrario, and the fast lane live from Ballpark Village. Our live broadcast is refreshed by Budweiser. This Bud's for you, and by Holiday World and Splash and Safari. Feast on fun this summer with the new Good Gravy Roller Coaster. Hey, we're uh, coming up to that season in St. Louis where we are going to have a lot of rain. It's inevitable. And when we have a lot of rain in St. Louis, I hope your gutter does its job. But if it doesn't, you need to get in touch with gutterpros.com. Doing its job entails having water come down your roof to your gutters and then flow from your gutters down your downspout and out into the grass or into a uh, pipe in your yard. Well, at Gutter Pros, water goes where they tell it to go. It's not going to be a situation where you're going to see water coming over the 
side of your gutters and coming down in, in buckets on your head over the, the middle of your house. They're going to provide you with the perfect sized gutters. They're going to provide you, if you need it, leaf protection. They're going to do a great job on how your house looks with soffit and fascia. And you're going to love what they do. They get 4.9 out of 5 stars on their reviews. At Gutter Pros, they're a St. Louis-based company with an A-plus rating by the Better Business Bureau. And I can tell you, from firsthand uh, visual uh, experience, they do amazing work. You love Dave Sylvester. He is their manager, and he's a wonderful guy, and he's a St. Louis guy. If you need new gutters, go to gutterpros.com. the Blues Locker Room. What a goal by Robert Thomas! It's time now for Blues forward Robert Thomas on the opening drive. Driven by pure performance, the only stop for all your aftermarket vehicle needs. Rick Grimsley, Dan McLaughlin, Randy Carricker, the opening drive on 101 ESPN. The Blues winners over Calgary last night at Enterprise Center. They take on San Jose tomorrow, 6 o'clock pregame here on 101 ESPN. And the action comes your way at 7. Robert Thomas does join us on the Celebrity Line on 101 ESPN. Good morning, sir. How are you doing? Uh, let's start with this. It's Easter weekend. Robert Thomas, thumbs up or thumbs down on deviled eggs? Uh, I'm a thumbs down. I am too. Totally a thumbs down on deviled eggs. Is there an Easter food that you like? Ham? Um, yeah, we usually just do a turkey. Um, probably not this year, but um, that's usually our Easter thing. Are you just not a fan of deviled eggs in general? Yeah, just not a deviled eggs guy. I, I guarantee you being a pro athlete, you're in great shape. You're probably just pounding like some of those chocolate Easter bunnies, maybe some of the peanut butter eggs. You know, that's that's what you're all about, I'm sure. Yeah, I used to do that. No, not so much anymore. <laughs> 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 well, Robert, obviously a great win for you guys last night. I'm going to start with Jordan Bennington. Two assists for him. I'm surprised he also didn't score a goal. Were you surprised by the two assists from him? Uh, well, I knew the second one. I didn't know he got an assist on the first goal, so that was pretty cool. Um, always nice seeing your, your goalies get involved, and uh, he's been a great puck handler, and he's been playing a lot more this year, so uh, it's pretty cool seeing that happen. In this final stretch, you guys are having a lot of different guys stepping up. Brandon Saad has just continued to stay hot in March, and then you have Bull Duke with a goal, and then even Nathan Walker with a fight last night. How big is it to have so many different guys stepping up? You know, we're just finding ways to win. Um, you know, this is the hardest time of the year to win, and um, you need everyone to win, and um, everyone's stepping up in different ways, and um, it's all helping the, the team succeed. So uh, we didn't play our best game last night, but uh, found a way to win, and that's what's important. I want to go back to Bennington for a moment. Does he ever come up to you guys and say, you know what, it's just not that hard, fellas. It's just really not that hard. <laughs> 
Uh, no, he, he didn't yet. Uh, I think he was pretty pumped, though. Um, you know, we've been telling him our goalies, you know, they both can shoot the puck pretty good. So uh, they dump it in and he gets some time to take a crack at it. So you said the operative word, though, is yet. So you're going to hear about it today, I'm sure. <laughs> Uh, at some point, definitely will. Hey, Robert, if we could go back to game one of the season through game 73, what's the biggest difference in Jake Neighbors? Yeah, I would say just confidence. Um, you know, he's gained it. He's he's playing well. He's slowly getting to, to another level, and um, that's important as a young player. So it uh, feels like yesterday I was in his shoes, and um, just just the big step he's taken this year is, is really impressive. and. Uh, he's finding what works for him, and uh, he's doing it really well. I get the sense that your game and his game mesh really well. Am I accurate in that assessment? Yeah, yeah. We both play a similar style, and, um, you know, he's around the net a lot, and um, it's always uh, always nice to see as someone who's trying to set up guys. Well, and some really tough news coming out this week about Oscar Sundquist that he will miss the rest of the season after tearing his ACL. How tough is it losing Sonny for the rest of this stretch? Yeah, yeah, it really sucks. Um, Got to feel for a guy who um, puts his heart and soul in every night. Um, you know, he's he's someone everyone loves and respects in the room, and um, you know, he puts the team first every single game, every every year. So. Um, Really sucks to see him go out. Um, I know he's in good spirits right now, which is good, but uh, it's definitely frustrating. Pull back the curtain a little bit for us in a guy like Sunquist again and what he does for a team. Like, not necessarily what we as fans may see on the ice and us in the media, but uh, what he does behind the scenes. Give us a, a little idea what he means. Yeah. Um, I mean, just, just someone that, you know, if the demon's going to shoot the puck, you know, he's jumping in front of it. Um, he's great on the PK. He does so many things well defensively and um, and just things that nobody you don't want to do but you need to do for the team. And um, that's something that everyone in that room knows. And uh, off the ice as well, he's just got a great smile. He's always having fun. Um, you know, never, never a bad day when Sonny's here. So that's what he always walks around and says. <laughs> hey, Robert, I, I know that you try to stay away from social media, but there's a, a lot of buzz over the, of course, the, uh, over the course of the last couple of weeks, people listing their top five, top 10 centers in the league. And I, I've seen your name on a couple of top five center lists in the whole league. How do you react to that? Yeah, it's, uh, it's pretty cool. Um, you know, something, uh, you know, I worked hard to, to get to the spot I'm at today, and it's nice to be recognized. Um, yeah, I think I've had a pretty good season. I uh, had a little bump lately, but that's all It's all good. The team's winning, and um, I think it's uh, it's pretty cool to be to be up there with some of those big names. I asked Bernie Federko yesterday how big it was for him to get to 100 points the first time he got to it. How much of a carrot is that for you? Yeah, uh I mean, it, it would definitely be cool. I think it's definitely something that I want to accomplish in my career. Um, you know, whenever it happens, it happens. But, um, you know, just happy about kind of the development I've taken and the uh, big step I've taken this year. What is it like mentally for you right now just playing these games down the stretch? Are you guys checking out the scoreboard to see where everybody's at and where you're at? Or what is that like? Yeah, I think, uh, you know, a lot of times... We're, we're kind of looking at L.A. and Vegas, and those are on the West Coast, so a lot of times they're on after us. So I think the important thing is just taking care of our business first, and um, you know, that's what we did last night, and then uh, check the scores right after. So um, I think, you know, if we, we need to put ourselves in a good spot and win, you know, eight, eight or seven or eight of the next, you know, our last nine games to – really give us a good chance you, you've been in the playoffs you've been to a stanley cup and now some of these young guys are experiencing what it may be like to be in the playoffs can you describe what that experience is like and how things change whether it be going down the stretch here for these young guys or if you get into the playoffs what playoff hockey is like as opposed to just regular season hockey yeah i think it's it's just tougher um you know the games are so much tighter you don't have much room uh mistakes are, are worth so much more and uh, I mean, to be honest, we've been playing playoff hockey for the last little while and been in that mindset. And uh, I think it's a good experience for, for a lot of our young guys that are in the lineup to 
to understand it and um, and learn from it. Hey, Robert, one last thing. It, it seems like to us that it should be easy to play above the level of your competition when your competition is a team like the San Jose Sharks. But several of your teammates have admitted during the course of the season that that's a problem, pl playing down to the level of competition. Do you have any idea? I, I know why that happens. It's because of the record. But how difficult is it to go in and take care of business against a team that you really should take care of business against? Yeah, uh, I think, they're, you know, just looking at someone's record doesn't tell you the whole story. Um, you know, there's every team's still very good. Um, you know, they're all NHL players. They're all really competitive. And uh, a lot of those teams have, have a lot of young guys that are, are playing for jobs and playing to make the league. So um, those games are hard. Uh, I mean, you look at the record and you should say easy win, but there's a lot of different things that go into it. And, um, you know, those guys are playing, you know, like I said, for, for their job and trying to make the league and they have nothing to lose. And um, so those games are, are really hard to win. And uh, if you don't bring your top game, um, you know, sometimes you're not going to win it. Robert Thomas, always good to hear you. Thank you very much for the time. We appreciate it. Have a great game tomorrow and then enjoy your Easter on Sunday. Yep, thanks, guys. Thank you, Thank sir. You. Appreciate it. Robert Thomas with us on 101 ESPN. Coming up, we've got our Rush Hour Reset. Stick around. And then at 930, the greatest comebacks ever on the opening drive. It's time for another moment in Blues history. On this day back in 2016, the Blues would win their 46th game of the season, 3-1 over the Colorado Avalanche. David Back has scored the power play goal in the first period. Troy Brower scored a power play goal in the second period. And Vladimir Tarasenko scored his 36th goal of the season in that second period. Brian Elliott also stopping 20 of 21 shots. This state in Blues history was powered by Classic Air Care, making people comfortable since 1926 for all your HVAC needs classicaircare.com Purchase an HVAC system and receive a $1,600 rebate, a 16-year warranty at SwissAirSTL.com.
101 ESPN has your chance to score free tickets to Green Day on August 15th at Hollywood. By Sumner One. We're recapping the biggest sports stories of the day on the opening drive with a rush hour reset. It's 9-16 in St. Louis. Time check brought to you by Clarkson Jewelers, an officially licensed Rolex jeweler, Brooke, Dan, and Randy. Don't forget, 101 ESPN is going to be broadcasting live from the Budweiser Brew House before the Cardinals home opener next week. We'll be at Ballpark Village. The home opener is almost here, and we're going to be just steps away from Bush Stadium. We will be there. BK and Ferrari will be there. The Fast Lane all coming to you live next Thursday, April 4th from Ballpark Village. Our opening day broadcast brought to you by Holiday World and Splash and Safari and by Budweiser. The Cardinals did open up their regular season yesterday with a 7-1 loss at L.A. to the Doyers. Same two teams tonight, an Apple TV game, so no Bally, and that starts at 9-10 on Apple. And uh, Bobby Miller is going to go for the, the Doyers and not... Yoshi Yamamoto, mm-hmm. and he will be opposed by the Cardinal left-hander Zach Thompson. Zach Thompson. I'm excited to see Zach Thompson this season and also in the game, obviously, today. But at the same time, I'm very interested. I know I said earlier you can't take into account too much of the spring training stats if we just base it off this one game to start the season. Miles Michael is not so great. Paul Goldschmidt, after a not-so-great spring training, looked fantastic, obviously, yesterday. The only Cardinal to really do anything out there. On pace for, like, there. 500 hits. <laughs> <laughs> on pace for yeah. five. Yeah. Scott. 162 steals. Oh, yeah. there we go. Yeah. We're really getting somewhere there. But I'm excited to see what Zach Thompson can do with this rotation. I'm going to be interested to look at his velocity. There were times mm-hmm. that in spring training, the velocity seemed to be down a bit. And maybe that's uh, by purpose, or on purpose for what he's trying to work on. But I'm going to check out the velocity. And then you get a great test. You're going against the Dodgers to see how he fares tonight against the best team in the league. And speaking of velocity, Victor Scott will be in the lineup again. He showed his speed yesterday with his first stolen base. And since all the way back to 1900, right, Brooke? Mm-hmm. First Cardinal to steal his first base on opening day in more than, well, a century and a quarter now. Pretty impressive. Yes, very impressive. And I think it's just very fitting that before he gets his first Major League Baseball hit, he gets his first Major League Baseball yeah. steal for his career. I'm very excited to see what Victor Scott II is going to be able to do. I told you guys yesterday, I think he's going to make it really hard, even with these injuries and some of the players coming back here soon, like Tommy Edmund, Lars Newtbar, and Dylan Carlson. Even with them coming back soon-ish, I still think Victor Scott II is going to make it really hard on the Cardinals to send him down. Even if he's hitting like 200 but draws some walks, I I want to watch that. And if some of the hits are infield hits, mentioned it earlier that the Cardinals were 27th in infield hits a year ago, that he is able to generate some type of offense, some type of excitement. So, uh, yeah, I'm with you. And then I go back to yesterday and Zach Thompson tonight. I mean, you're going to find out what you got early on. You got Betts Otani Freeman. And Betts Otani Freeman yesterday, five for eight, four walks, a double two home runs, struck out a couple of times. And we were mentioning it earlier in the segment and in the show, is this the greatest one, two, three, in the history of baseball, they'd be in the conversation. Absolutely, they would. Meanwhile, hockey, the Blues, 5-3 winners over the Flames last night at Enterprise Center. Jordan Bennington was great between the pipes and also had a couple of assists. The Blues will take on San Jose tomorrow here on 101 ESPN. Jimmy Snuggerud's Minnesota Golden Gophers beat Omaha to advance in the NCAA hockey tournament. They will play Boston U tomorrow, and the reason that's notable is because once his season is over, the Blues can negotiate with Snuggerud if they want to, to come to the National Hockey League. Well, uh, let's see. Let's see what happens. And if you're still in it, why not? You're going to sign. If you, if this is what you think he's going to be anyway, bring yeah. him up. Yeah. By the way, he didn't do anything last night. He was 
kind of invisible in their game. Uh, last night, college basketball in Boston, UConn over San Diego State, 80-52. And Illinois knocked off Iowa State, 72-69. So in the Elite Eight tomorrow, UConn and Illinois will play at TD Garden in Boston. Alabama eliminated North Carolina. Great game, 89-87. Crimson Tide win it. They outscored North Carolina by 10 in the second half. And Clemson advances. For their first Elite Eight since 1980, they knocked off second-seeded Arizona 77-72. to So Alabama and Clemson, the old college football championship matchup, <laughs> is going to get together in the Elite Eight tomorrow. What yeah. is this? People would say, yeah. now, wait a minute, is this a college football playoff? No, it's the Elite Eight. <laughs> it's the Elite Eight. Yeah. Clemson held Arizona without a single field goal for 10 minutes, a 10-minute stretch, and that was the game. Arizona it was actually their worst shooting performance of the year. Credit Clemson. They went to his own defense, and it made a huge difference in the game. And our guy, Caleb Love, really struggled, and Arizona could not hit a three nope. to no. save their lives. I hated to see that. I really did. Yeah. I was rooting for Arizona just for Caleb Love. But I want to go back to Illinois now. That was a great game for him. Dan, you mentioned earlier, what was the stat about their field goal percentage? It was their f- uh, free throw shooting was 51%. Oh, f- three throw. Free, yes. Free throws. 51%. 51%. But despite that, they were still able to win. Terrence Shannon Jr. is just an absolute beast. He is the reason that they were able to mm-hmm. pull through with that win. Their ability to move the ball early. So Iowa State is so aggressively number one defensive team in the country. They try to trap you everywhere you're on the, on the floor. <laughs> And Illinois recognized that, found the open man, made the extra pass. They went up by nine early. Mm -hmm. And I I thought that was a difference in the game because at that point then, you're talking about Iowa State trying to play catch-up and catch-up, and they couldn't do it. And credit Illinois. Now, for winning that, here's your reward. You get UConn (laughs) and by 30. Yeah, winner of that game might win it all. Tonight, we've got NCAA action for you right here on 101 ESPN. North Carolina State will play Marquette in an 11-2 matchup. Gonzaga will take on top-seeded Purdue. Duke and Houston won the late games along with Creighton and Tennessee. They started at 9.09 St. Louis time on TBS. Creighton is really good. It's a 2-3 matchup, so it should be highly competitive, but I think that should be another great game. Tennessee is a three and a half point favorite over Creighton. Can I go back to Illinois and UConn just for one second? Because I always kind of like to root for the underdog. Not saying that Illinois is the underdog in any way, but still, this is a great job by them to get to this point and to the Elite Eight. Don't you guys kind of want to see Illinois beat UConn? Because it's just been sure. the UConn Invitational. I kind of want to see a little chaos here. I, I want to see it in to your point, Brooke, primarily the favorites are winning across mm-hmm. the board in the NCAA tournament. We're not seeing massive upsets. Yeah, you might see a team that was favored by two and a half or something like that go down, but not often. This has been a tournament that's been uh, favorable to the favorites. When this started, my final four was Illinois, Arizona, lost them last night, Houston, and Tennessee. So I'm re- rooting for Houston and Tennessee tonight. I've got Illinois, but I have Illinois winning it all over Houston. The whole ball of wax. You went from the get-go. Uh-huh. I was an ILL INI fan, rooting for Kerry Davis. Did Michigan. you have him uh, against, matched up against UConn, too? Uh, no. Really? At UConn going down? Yeah, I was. When? At the beginning of the tournament. I, I don't even remember when I had him getting knocked they out. They are incredible. <laughs> yeah, they're really good. I don't remember, and I could be way off base here. I don't remember in recent times that there's been a team this dominant in the NCAA tournament. You Florida, know who it was? 2007? It was, it, I think it was the, uh, well, it could have been the Kentucky team that lost to Wisconsin, the undefeated team, mm-hmm. or it could have been the undefeated UNLV that lost to Duke, and people thought they threw that game. That's the, I'm, I, that's where I was going, Randy, <laughs> is that the UNLV team that went to back-to-back uh, NCAA championship games, they had Moises, uh, Moses Scurry, Anderson Hunt, Stacey Ogman, Larry Johnson, uh, I'm forgetting if they they're all pros. Yeah, I mean, and all like high end pros. How do you right. lose with that team? And yeah. I'm looking at UConn, going, these are all high end pros. I don't, I don't see them losing. It, it's pretty amazing. They, they are great. All right, so there you have it. That's your rush hour reset here on 101 ESPN. Coming up this weekend, the world experienced the anniversary of the greatest comeback of all time. Greatest comebacks of all time. We, we've got a list of them for you next year on 101 ESPN. 
It's time for a DraftKings at Casino Queen Redbird Report on 101 ESPN. Brent Grimsley here for your Redbird Report. The Cardinals falling to the mighty Dodgers on opening day, losing 7-1. Miles Michaelis giving up five earned runs on seven hits and two walks while fanning five across four and a third innings of work. The bright spot for the Redbirds is Paul Goldschmidt going three for four with a solo home run. The rest of the Cardinals, though, they went a combined 0 for 27. Your Redbirds are back in action today with first pitch tonight at 9-10 with Zach Thompson on the mound. The Redbird Report is presented by DraftKings at Casino Queen. Play, stay, die at DraftKings at Casino Queen. Hit it out of the park this baseball season at DraftKings at Casino Queen. Book DraftKings at Casino Queen's Stay and Play Cardinals Hotel Package. This Grand Slam bundle includes one-night hotel stay, 10% off casino dining, two St. Louis Cardinals tickets, and free shuttle service to the game starting at just $149. Call 618-874-5000 to book today. Must be 21. Gambling problem? Call 1-800-GAMBLER. Based on availability, restrictions apply. Planning for spring at Lowe's means big savings on outdoor power equipment. And Lowe's knows nothing feels better than free. Buy one select Ego string trimmer, leaf blower, or mower kit. Get one select 56-volt battery free. That's up to a $299 value. Power through spring with Ego, the number one rated brand in cordless outdoor power. In today's fast-paced world of digital marketing, making meaningful connections with your audience can be a daunting challenge for any business. But what if there was a place where connections aren't just made, but nurtured for growth? Enter 2060 Digital, our sister company backed by a 100-year-old media empire just like 101 ESPN. If you're a business owner or a marketer seeking more strategic ways to reach and engage customers, look no further than 2060 Digital. With 12 years of expertise, 2060 specializes in simplifying the complexities of digital marketing. Our team demystifies the process by transforming it from a challenge into an opportunity for your business. Whether it's enhancing your brand's online presence, optimizing digital campaigns, or increasing customer engagement, 2060 is here to propel your business forward. Think your business has room to grow? Let us prove it to you. Visit 101ESPN.com slash 2060digital to request a complimentary digital audit today.
Blues Hockey can be heard exclusively on 101 ESPN. Get the info you need before and after every Blues game with the first community pre- and post-game show driven by Clement Ford. And catch every Blues home game from the first community terrace. Bring out the Zamboni! Live from the Car Shield Studio, this is the opening drive on 101 ESPN. Hope you're having a good Friday. You did there, Randy. It should be a good Friday for everybody. It should, yeah, especially if you you have the the long weekend, if you don't have to work today. Congratulations to you. And, of course, this is the weekend where the greatest comeback of all time occurred. But we're talking about other comebacks, some of the great comebacks in the history of sport. Uh, Do you guys have a a favorite comeback ever? Ever the greatest. And this is going to be one that I know that everybody in the room is probably going to pick here because how do you rival this one? Tiger Woods, 2019 Masters. Dan, I already see you agreeing with me right there. We discussed it. It's hard to beat that one because of everything that had happened, of course, in 2017 prior to that. But the way that he was able to really answer all the critics, all the skepticism, and win the Masters in that fashion, unforgettable to me, the greatest comeback in sports history. It really was. And also, we talked about all the stuff leading up to it. We know what happened in 2017. But it was also the first time he have ever won a major when trailing after three rounds. And he became the fifth player in golf history to have a gap of over a decade between major wins. He had the personal issues, which were uh, obviously all over the world. Then he's phys- the, the physical ailments he went through. And I, I think the amazing thing that no one talks about with him, he completely revamped his swing three mm-hmm. different times. I mean... That, that to me, is incredible that he just completely changed his swing, went from where he was early on in his career, then to another stage of his career, to another stage of his career. And we're talking, if you're not following golf and you're just the casual fan, uh, I'm trying to figure out what would be something that would be an example of that. But completely overhauling your swing when you're that good is Nothing short of amazing in my mind. And I'm with you, Brooke. It's the greatest comeback we've ever seen. One of the other great ones for St. Louisans was way back in 1986. The St. Louis Blues on May 12th of 1986, facing elimination from the Calgary Flames. They trail after two periods, 4-1. to They wind up trailing by a score of 5-2 midway through the third. And then they start to come back. And things happened. It was A wild scene after the Blues, Greg Paslowski had tied the game late and sent the game to overtime. So facing elimination, down 5-2 with 12 minutes left. 
five three five four five five, and then Wickenheiser scores in overtime to give the Blues the six five win. That was the greatest moment in Blues history until twenty nineteen, and it came in a series that they wound up losing. That's what I was going to say. They didn't even win the cup. They no. didn't even get past the Calgary Flames. So, but that was the best moment in Blues history for a long, long time. It really was. And then you, of course, have to talk about the other great comeback that you just mentioned there. The twenty nineteen Blues going from the worst team in the league, then winning the Stanley Cup in the fashion they did. That to me is one of the greatest comebacks in St. Louis history. Guys, I think about not only the comeback and being the team with the worst record in the NHL as 2019 dawned, but how fortunate we as a fan base are that the Blues won Game 7. Look what happened oh to San God. Jose, yeah. right, against Pittsburgh. Or look what happened, you, you know what happened to the Predators, right, when they mm-hmm. went to the finals. There are no guarantees after you go to the finals that you're going to get another bite at the apple. And we had the pandemic the year after the Blues played. They were the best team in the Western Conference when the pandemic hit. But, man, if the Blues don't win Game 7, I wonder what the future holds we might go another 50 years without a cup there was so much magic that season i felt very lucky that was actually my first season covering the blues here in st louis when i moved and at the very beginning you had the yo firing and then obviously they were not doing that well i will never forget because i was hosting the blues weekly show that was on kmov at that time and panger was my guest and this was right after i believe new year's eve it was somewhere around that time and i said what do you think realistically is going to happen with this blues team he said i think they're going to win the stanley cup (laughs) and i'm like what are you talking about like i literally was shocked when Panger said that. I was like, am I missing something here? This team is the worst in the league. (laughs) And then, I'll never forget, I was with Maurice Drummond, who's now the morning anchor over at KMOV. We were at spring training, and the Blues started going on their run, and Maurice looked at me and he said, well, you might need to cancel your plans for a while. The Blues are about to go to the Stanley Cup. And sure enough, it was just an insane ride after that. And I just feel very lucky, and it's a memory that I will always hold, that I was able to go and be there for Game 7 in Boston, go on there on the ice and interview the players afterwards just seeing that journey for them that truly was and you guys know everything that was going on behind the scenes all the games that we saw but just all the little tidbits it felt like a movie really yeah. take away from it is it, it galvanized the city yeah right we all wondered what man what would it be like if the blues won what what would actually what would it feel like what would it be and it was emotions that people had that were much different in my opinion than those that are followers of the cardinals well, and think about it from this perspective and brooke you mentioned all the little things when you hear Gloria in your car, don't you turn it up real loud? Or it makes it you think of memories. memories. Yeah. yeah, yeah. Everybody's yeah. shouting and screaming. And then I remember looking back at the video in St. Louis and just seeing everybody everywhere just screaming Gloria and celebrating. That was a really special time. Now, I would guess that there's some people, there were some people in history that thought that they had done their job and then... That's what happened when the, when the big fella moved the rock. But that was game six in uh, 2011. And another, it's amazing how many of these we have relative to other cities, but we wound up with this. And they came from 10 and a half back. Dan, you were the voice of that team. And I remember saying on my birthday, sitting in this very chair on the fast lane, that the Cardinals had 0% chance of making the playoffs. We all felt that way. We were just kind of playing out the string. And little did we know that there was a get-together. And some of the players said, we're coming back. We're going to make this thing happen. The one question I I really do wonder about it is who knew and when did they know that Tony La Russa was going to retire? And I I don't know if we're ever going to get a true answer on that. No. You know who knew? Mike Shannon. Really? Yeah. And he wouldn't, you know, he kept the secret, but Mike knew. I wonder when he knew, though. Yeah. You yeah. know, I mean, we had heard some some people around the club had heard rumblings about it. Mm-hmm. 
But no, everybody's like, oh, Tony yeah. be back. And then, yeah. you know, and then he did it. Yep. Yeah. I, I wonder if he truly, re re regret, uh, truly regrets leaving at the time that he did. I wonder that, too. I think he, he does. I, I think he probably knew that Albert wasn't going to be back, and that played a big role in his retirement. And did he know what was coming? Mm -hmm. You had Martinez, you had Rosenthal, you had some of these young True. arms that were coming that yeah. would make this a competitive team for a, n a number of years. Yeah. One fun fact, kids, the greatest fourth quarter comeback. Now, the, and we'll get to the Bills and the Oilers later. We'll get to Tom Brady against the Falcons later. The biggest fourth quarter comeback in NFL history happened at Bush Stadium in November of 1987. I was producing the game for KMOX. Bill Wilkerson and Mike Shannon were on the call, and I got in touch with our friend Bob Underwood of Big Red STL. Follow him on the socials if you were an old Big Red fan because it's awesome. And uh, Bob has collected a lot of material from over the years. So down 28-3, entering the fourth quarter, the Big Red came back. And the Cardinals wound up winning that game by a score of 31-28. Donald Igwe Buike hit the crossbar with a 55-yard <laughs> field goal yep. attempt as time expired. And the Cardinals were able to hang on. And that is still, to this day, the greatest fourth quarter comeback in the history of the NFL. Amazing. I remember the name because uh, of what we've talked about off the air, Andy. And then you telling me being behind the scenes for that game. You, you had some great stories from those those being in those booths with those guys. Oh, with with uh, Bill and Mike. And yep. there was one time earlier in that season where I was a producer and I missed a touchdown. I, I went to a commercial break and missed a touchdown. Not they weren't great. real happy, were they? They were not. Bill was the best, <laughs> though. Bill Wilkerson was so caring. And, you know, he, he, he knew I felt bad, so he didn't hammer me. But I, I felt horrible about it. It was just terrible. It happens. Yeah. There was another one. Where And again, Good Friday this weekend, George Allen did analysis for the football card for a while when I was producing. Bill and George Allen. We go to San Diego and have another big comeback against the Chargers. And uh, Lomax hits Earl Farrell in the hands with a touchdown pass on fourth and goal with less than a minute to go. Would have been another comeback just like that. They were down like 28-3 in the fourth quarter. Lomax hits Farrell in the hands with a pass that Earl drops, and George Allen is doing the color, and he goes, Jesus Christ! <laughs> <laughs> so that's, that's, that's so what you good. want from your analyst. Your but passion. Oh, yeah, big time. But I know a lot of you remember, especially a lot of the Buffalo Bills fans, uh, when we didn't have a football team, this is when you became Bills fans. This was a, probably the biggest moment. Buffalo B Buffalo was down 35-3 in that game. Yeah. Wound up going ahead 38-35. Houston did wind up tying it, and Buffalo won it in overtime 41-38. And the rest of the country was saying, really? Do we have to watch Buffalo again? Yeah, exactly. <laughs> Super Bowl. And everybody wanted Warren Moon to play in the Super Absolutely. Bowl. Absolutely. Yeah. From a personal standpoint, let me give you this one, because we haven't talked about individuals. Well, here, just listen.
Three years and nine months, he mm-hmm. dealt with Hodgkin's lymphoma. He had dealt with a bad back, and he wound up scoring a goal later in that game, too. When he scored that goal, it's one of the great calls ever from mm-hmm. Gary Thorne. But he saved that franchise in Pittsburgh mm-hmm. and in many ways saved hockey around that area and has meant so much to Pittsburgh Penguins fans. And uh, I watched that game when it was live, and it was just I got goosebumps right now just hearing that. It was awesome. Let me give you one more because this is what made Brooke a sports fan. Can you paint the picture for us? Well, I just remember I was a little girl. I just remember a lot of the stuff through my dad's lens. He was a Titans super fan, still is, of course. That's what we talk about all the time. Anytime the Titans make a move, he's the first person I call to check in with how he's feeling because he always has a lot of thoughts and opinions. But my dad was a Titans super fan. He did the flame head. He did the face paint. I just remember that time and seeing his excitement surrounding that. Everybody talking about the Music City Miracle. And, of course, you have the greatest show on turf. I talk about all the time, just growing up seeing that, some of the greatest NFL football I have ever personally Mm -hmm. seen and the history behind it, it's what made me a sports fan. And, of course, rest in peace to Frank Wycheck. And it was a lateral pass. I'm just going to go ahead and put that out there. I know there's a lot of Bills fans. I know there's a lot of Bills fans. I'm sorry, but... Uh, what a moment that was! Where, and where, where were you? Were you like in the in the family room? What? what? We watch in the TV, so it's the same TV. We actually still have it at my parents' house, and my mm-hmm. dad is a close TV watcher, so I just remember that specifically. Okay, and, and you were with that particular play that kind of changed your life, right? It was. It was the Music City Miracle in general. Huge uh-huh. Steve McNair fan. Of course, Eddie George, who looks like he can still play yeah. to this day. And then you have Kevin Dyson and, of course, Frank Wycheck. He has passed away. But just all those legends with the Tennessee Titans, the Music City Miracle, that is what grew my fandom into sports. Those are the biggest comebacks in sports. And, of course, Sunday's the anniversary of the biggest comeback ever. Can I give you one just quick one? Because I was thinking yeah. about this. Albert Pool holes coming back to st louis oh, yeah. and getting 703 home runs career home runs that was amazing pretty good pretty good comeback no yeah. doubt uh that's our look at some of the best we, we've got other ones too patriots were up 28 to 3 sorry anthony stalter or uh down 28 3 sorry anthony uh, 2004 red sox <laughs> uh Bucky Dent, the, the Yankees were down 14 and a half in August to the red sox in 1978 came back and uh, wound up tying the division And then Bucky Dent hit a home run to win the division in game number 163. Coming up next, we are going to head down the stretch with a little edition of Rock and Roll, brought to you by Bradford Bruns here on 101 ESPN. Major League Baseball is back on ESPN. Sunday night, Cardinals and Dodgers, pregame at 5. First pitch at 610. The MLB plays on 101 ESPN.
101 ESPN Sports Center. Blues bag two more points. I'm Bradford Bruns with your Sports Center update driven by Johnny Landoff Chevrolet and Johnny Landoff Autoplex. Now pursuing Los Angeles for the final wild card berth in the Western Conference. St. Louis secured a 5 3 win over Calgary last night. And All Star Center Robert Thomas joined the opening drive a short time ago to talk about everybody banding together to stay in that race. We're just finding ways to win. Um, you know, this is the hardest time of the year to win, and um, you need everyone to win. and um, everyone's stepping up in different ways and um, it's all helping the, the team succeed so uh, we didn't play our best game last night but uh, found a way to win and that's what's important. Thomas and company hosting San Jose tomorrow with a puck drop of seven on 101 ESPN. Baseball, the Cardinals and Dodgers resume their series at 9, 10 p.m. Zach Thompson takes the rubber for the visitors while L.A. counters with Bobby Miller. The Sports Center update was driven by Johnny Londoff. Find new roads and shop 24-7 at Londoff.com and LondoffAutoplex.com. Are you kidding me? This is the opening drive on 101 ESPN. Brought to you by Sumner One. Enroll. Let's rock. Let's rock today. Matthew Rocchio is taking a few days off. He'll be back with us on Monday, I believe. Bradford Brun's doing a superb job filling in. Bradford, what do you got for us? Appreciate it, guys. We will keep this one short and sweet, but with so much of the focus today, and rightfully so, on the Cardinals dropping their 2024 season opener at the hands of the Dodgers, 7-1. Did you miss what actually occurred yesterday in the desert? Bludgeoning, beatdown, whatever adjective you want to use. It applied as Arizona absolutely routed yesterday. Yes, the Rockies, but still 16 to 1 with 14 runs in the third inning alone. Probably most impressive part of all of it, guys. Didn't even require a home run during that frame. It yeah. took the Rockies 34 <laughs> minutes to get through the inning. I'm honestly surprised that not even more time elapsed, but I know a lot of people last season, there was a lot of speculation as to whether heading into 2024, can Arizona replicate or even come close to the heights it reached last season? Defending NL champs, I mean, you certainly now have the addition of Jordan Montgomery and that young offensive core. There's a lot to like out there in the desert. Well, I'd say this. You can wake up as a Cardinal fan this morning and say, man, 7-1. <laughs> bad outing by Michaelis. Only three hits all off one bat of Paul Goldschmidt. Or you could wake up and be a Rockies fan. <laughs> right. So could pick your worse. poison. Could be worse. Could be worse. So I'm trying to take the positive spin on that here in St. Louis, Bradford. Yeah, Chris Bryant's manning the number three spot oh. in the order. Hitless. Oof. Where's his protection? For how long will he even be in there? It's just a mess. By the way, the Major League average yesterday was like 215. For the length of the game? No, offense. Oh. And the, uh, and the games, by the way, were very quick. Yeah. The games are like 220, 225. They were actually lower than they were a year ago. I so, like that. In the misery earlier. Yeah. In the misery yeah. Or win quickly, and then, <laughs> then you're happy. I wonder how quick that game went for the Diamondbacks and Rockies. Is Arizona your surefire number two in the NL West, or can San Diego perhaps put a wrench in that equation? I think it's the, for me, it's the Giants. Ah. I like the Giants, too. I'm, I don't yeah. know. I'm all about love the their Diamondbacks. Pitching. Love the Diamondbacks, yeah. too. So Giants just have I love the Padres. so much good pitching coming back, and they've added Solaire. They added Matt Chapman. Uh, they, Nick Ahmed has actually yep. uh, performed reasonably well for them. They've, they've got some pretty good players. That uh, first baseman, Lamont Wade, is pretty good. And Andrew Bailey, their young catcher, I, I, I wish he was on our side. The bottom of their lineup is going to be the question mark for them. I think they're going to be able to catch it. I definitely think they're going to be able to pitch. I like the. I still like the Padres. I, I think Mike Schilt will make a difference with them, and they've got stars in the middle of their lineup. So I like them as well. The I NL West is just so talented, other than the Rockies, but they're just so talented. It's hard to pick one in that one. Yeah, the battle for number two in that division. It's we're in the unanimous with the Dodgers, but the battle for number uh, two. I got I got to think about the Dodgers. <laughs> are, are we all unanimous <laughs> with the Rockies too? Yes. That they're bad? <laughs> yes. Yeah. I, think, so, I think we can all agree to that. But the middle three is a jumble. Yeah. Padres, D-backs, Giants, they could all finish 2-3-4. Uh, I tell you, Coors Field is going to be cavernous at times this year. Yeah. It was starting to get that way a few years ago, and now when they're this bad, and they're going to be bad. Yeah. Oh, their ownership might be the worst in sports going right now. Mm -hmm. Not good. No. Yeah. 
also, I just want to bring up Corbin Burns. Did Burns. you guys see him yesterday with yeah. the Orioles? It's pretty good. 11 uh, strikeouts. Glad he's not with the Brewers. That's very true. That is a good way to look at that, Randy. Yeah. He uh, he's really really good, and he's. I, I wonder if he's a Boris guy because he's a free agent after this Corbin year. Corbin Burns. Yeah, I believe he is. So he might. He'll get more than three hundred million dollars if he stays healthy this year. He'll sign a contract for north of three hundred million. If I was him, though, I'd go to lunch with Blake Snell and Jordan Montgomery. I would too. And I'd say, yeah. all right, guys, what happened to you last year, and what do I need to avoid? Yeah, good idea. <laughs> Call those guys and find out. Right. You, you were asked yesterday. You know, what do you think about this, that, and the other? And you said, well. It's real easy. Go find Scott Boris Mm -hmm. when you're talking about Jordan Montgomery. You know, why didn't this happen? Why didn't the other teams go at him? Well, other teams probably did, but what was the problem? Scott Boris. Yeah, Yeah. that's that's the problem. Do we know of any cases of people who have tried to get out of their contract with Scott Boris? Because I'm assuming they're signing a player agent contract with him. He's been fired a few times. I think Tatis Jr. might have fired him. I think he did. And there's been guys that have done it. But once you sign, you're still going to get a percentage of what he signed you for. Mm -hmm. So you can you can get rid of him, but he's still going to get his percentage. Right. Uh, Great job today by our producer and audio and video engineer, the one, the only, uh, Bradford Bruns in for Matthew Rocchio. Th- thank you, sir. Have a great weekend. Always relish the opportunity. Never issue it. Have a blessed holiday yourself. <laughs> <laughs> Brooke, did you have fun today? I did. And I had a delicious cookie from Jay Delsing. Thank you, Jay. Uh, Danny Mac, great work as always. Great work. Pleasure. Uh, we thank you for tuning in, texting in, and being a part of the show. And to just keep pushing that rock. <laughs> <laughs> Dan don't, is shaking his head. Right don't just have a great weekend. Have an American weekend, to St. Louis. <laughs> That's right. Up to date info and breaking sports news first. All on the 101 ESPN app in your App Store or Google Play.